you know, for me, the focus is meant to be bad people and good people. Ooh. Because if you're good and I'm good, regardless if you have a vagina and I have a penis, mm. let's come together and solve the problem. And yeah. fight her penis. But now as soon as you say gender, uh, eh? happiness. <laughs> 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 And that's my happiness. Is it, this is why you get dragged. Yes. You <laughs> fucking drag me all up. I'm yeah, so fucking serious. Drag, man. I hear you. I double fucking dead. <laughs>
Um, so I've got six kids. We'll speak about that as well. But I can um, see Saul at a taxi rank. I'm dead off. 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 Yes, yes. I'm dead off. I'm dead off. I'm dead off. No, so you can be rank manager. I can see you. Yeah, he looks yeah, like a rank manager. Yeah, he's got the voice. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm dead off. Yeah. Yo, I'm dead off. Strong. So how how are you not sure. Zulu when you were born Zulu, bro? My profile is done. Yeah, <laughs> profile yami ashi sababa. You must make sure. Anyways, um, so yeah, Newcastle was Zulu. Um, worked in banking, and then after that, I became an entrepreneur from about 2013. Um, and then I've just been on that journey up, up to now, where I think my voice is starting to get a bit of platform, and I'm trying to get out there and educate as many people as I sort of can. Um, the whole concept of being Zulu. Uh, because I'm passionate about teaching. My mom has been a teacher our whole life. My dad was a coach. My brother was a teacher. A coach? So I think, yeah, coach, coach soccer. My father oh, had three okay, soccer cool. teams. Um, so I think teaching is in the blood. I love educating. Um, and in that, part of it is also learning myself. Understanding culture, understanding religion, understanding just how the world works. And I think that's why maybe people think I have an interesting brain. It generally means I'm a nerd, but a nerd that can articulate himself yeah. in a sort of coolish nyana way yeah. than the other nerds. I love the way you speak, bro. I wish I could articulate like you, bro. Because <laughs> I have a lot of ideas in my head, but I can't articulate like The them. way you said it, it's yeah, like you, you fucking want to... <laughs> <laughs> it sounded so sexual. It was yeah, like yeah, you're yeah, macking on him you for a moment. Bro. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, Sounds sure. seductive, right? Yeah, yeah so... so Part of it has been unpacking just human beings and who we are and what makes us different from animals. And part of it is all of the labels we have. Part of them being now the tribal labels that we have today. If you look at the history for the people that are woke oh. and conscious, we come from uh, Ntu, who is our main ancestor as the Nguni people. Yeah. So we are called the people of Ntu, Bantu. When we say Umuntu. Bantu, individual is Muntu. Umuntu. That's the kind of boring shit I go when I research. So we came and we, and we split up. So when Usol decides to conquer Johannesburg and he goes and he fucks 20 women and he has all these fucking soul kids, which would be fucking rubbish, by the way. <laughs> oh, but, but this place now me, becomes Guasol. And the people become the people of Guasol. So to our um, um, Oh, I see where you go. So that's I where the Zulu comes from. Uh, you yes. know. Um, and funny enough, you don't even have to go far when people are like, yeah, but you can't leave your tribe. I'm like, when women marry into mm. a tribe, they already forsake their... Uh, exactly. So it, it's not as deep as people say it is. It's deep. It's our identity. But I, basically, it's a, it's a label. That's so true. where do we and all I come from? Now, now oh, is the time for us to, to change the labels. Where do we all come from? The reason TS uh, is no longer active. You forced Wood to leave his label. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Someone no, he does not identify as a teacher. As a chiller, as a chiller, you have a chiller. Well done, son. Hey, who was fucking doing? So, where are we from as, as, as black people? Yeah, bro. I'll, I'll tell you about um, the black South Africans that are popular, which is the Nguni and the Mosutu type of people. We come from up north, the Great Lakes, and then we migrated south because we're always moving. A lot of us, I'm not from Joburg. I came here because this is an oasis of sorts, but yeah. for money. Yeah. So the people moved for climate, for whatever the case may be. And then we came here and then we split. Because yeah. I heard we, vendors we are from Congo. Here. I heard so the DRC is the Great Lakes in the north. Oh. All of us come from there. Okay. All of us, let me not say all of us, because the Koi and the Sun were uh, already here. The but dicks. the rest of us, huh? Tosa, <laughs> what what? <laughs> no, like what, Congolese, what, what like Congolese have put the biggest things on earth, like in, in as far as like the average. Because you've seen the... No, there's a research on it. You should know this now. I, know read, about I read a lot Congolese of random dicks. things. Yeah, on the Wikipedia, the, oh. the nations with the biggest dicks. Congo is one Jesus of the Christ. There. No, and know. then there's a whole thing about the vendor people, <laughs> which you know, but you obviously refuse. Is it true? You're intellectual. Ah, man. Bila, this is about you. <laughs> hey, Panyo, this is about you. Ah, hey, the <laughs> yeah, bro. Sorry. Okay, so we come there, from there. Yeah, okay. so, so I'm, I'm just um, a student of life. And not only being a student, I'm an educator as far as possible because I think we're in one of the coolest times in history where we have the internet, we have information, and we have the ability to literally create new religions, create electric cars, create our own ESCOMs, have podcasts that are literally changing lives 
and the world out there. I heard from your last episode that you guys are being flighted at schools. <laughs> and it's always saying with the headmasters irresponsible. Mm. <laughs> but the reality is that kids need something new and fresh. And this is fucking it. Mm. So later on, when people are like, no, but the, the gospel of podcast and chill says, and people are like, no, but you can't question that because that's where we come from. You're like, no, it's just two fucking drunk niggas mm. that were fucking getting somewhere and having conversations that shape the world. So how did you start your own religion? Like, how do you even think of that, bro? Yeah, like, yeah, bro. I don't, I don't drink. I don't smoke. Uh, so normally they say we have a vice. One of them being I want a lot of kids. And you find a lot of these uh, polygamist niggas with a lot of kids generally don't drink and don't smoke. Um, so I, I, <laughs> I'm not going to say sex is our favorite part time because it's not even a sex thing. But we have a desire to be involved in something and children is one of them. Uh, shout out to Uso Poza from uh, Swatin because he had 210 children. Oh yeah, the king, yeah, the king. The That's the um, yeah. thing, King Swatin's uh, wife, one of the daughters, right? Sure. She had uh, the dad, the king Sopoza. Sopoza. He had like a hundred... Two hundred and, and he didn't he even seventy drink, wives. Even there's booze in his name. Seventy wives, two hundred. Yeah, booze in his name. <laughs> uh, What's up, booze on you? <laughs> I think my husband just comes guy. from that lineage. Nah, never. Your husband comes from that mm. lineage. That's okay. So oh yeah, yeah. You're okay. You <laughs> swati, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not a swati. Bleep that out, bro. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Wow. So so yeah. Um. Again, in unpacking how the world works. Okay, let me make, maybe take it a step back. Sure, please do. I'm a narcissist by definition. I love that you own that. That, that means I suck my own dick, basically. Um, I think I should gold. There's terms for it now. There's psychological terms. When we speak about Kanye West, when we speak about Onota and those guys, Elon Musk, I know his, his wife that divorced him after that five sons, she said he had a God complex. It's literally those things. We have narcissists in the world who think that they deserve to be superhuman. Shaga was one of them. That's why he ended up ruling the Zulu kingdom. Mukabe was another one. And, 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 and. I think I have a similar trait. And I think it's very important that we get more people fucking with their own shit if they feel they have like a great story to tell and great things to do. So in doing that, I kind of looked at the various options of influencing the world. Do I become a billionaire? Do I be- become Patrice? And then invest in a sundowns and then... Um, do charity work, whatever the case may be. Do I go into politics and become a Nelson Mandela and have statues erected in my honor? Do I become Pushiri, you know, and go around prophesying and whatever the case may be? What can I do? And I think one of the places that hasn't been explored is building new religions. I don't think people are thinking of, we've got all these brands, everyone's coming with their own brand. People are creating electric cars and energy energy drinks, energy drinks like grandeur, more fire, more fire. No one is thinking, but the underlying of all these things, I want to thank God for the ability to create grandeur. I want to thank God. I want to say, you know, to my, I'm like, I want to go deeper than that. I don't want to be a pastor. I don't want to be a prophet like Muhammad and supposedly Jesus. I want to go to the source and I want to be God so that when people reference, they reference me. Why do you say supposedly Jesus? So if you Islamic, uh, and if you have other beliefs, Jesus was just wait, another prophet. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Huh? Did you just scratch yourself with the <laughs> <laughs> podcast award? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not bad, that's why. No, man, come on. I mean, the chillers scratch our bags. We scratch our bags. <laughs> <laughs> what we do, you know. I don't think you guys know this. You, just, you know, you can't reach. You don't do that at home. Like, when you get to home, or you for Rocco. Jesus Christ. And, you're like, and, you're, and then yeah, you, watch your, you watch your visitors eat with the... Like, <laughs> you're like, yeah, and you're bacon, right? My, my back. <laughs> fuck, I don't think you... I don't think you fucking noticed that. Yo, you're a fucking wild. Oh, fuck you. Table, fuck table, y'all, nigga. on the wrong day. Yeah, I know. You're it's flames. Like Sorry, God, Ben and Jesus. I'm fucking flames. enjoying and listening to you, I came here to be serious. No, I, I enjoy I listening. Here, we I came here to be an intellectual and... No, we enjoy... No, no, dude, we enjoy that. As you're saying, I was enjoying that. Like, it's really... Bro. <laughs> um, so depending on the belief system you come from, Jesus is just another prophet who happened to say I'm God's son. The same way Haley Selassie was the return of Jesus Christ for the Rastas. Yeah, because he arrived in Jamaica and it, there was a drought and it started raining. Oh, snap. Right? And then they were like, yeah, he's, he's a God. Is the return of Jesus. Out, the return of Jesus. Literally, yeah. he was just a, a human being. Mm. Rastafara is, yeah. is literally that. So, Based on that, a guy returning Gannett in Jamaica. It's the weirdest thing. Mm. <laughs> so so uh, 
Jesus is arguably a prophet. Muhammad is is a prophet. Buddha is somewhat of a prophet. And and it's literally niggas that just went out into the world and started sharing their thoughts and started influencing other people. When you go out there and you say, I'm a chiller, it's like a thing. It's like being Zulu. You're literally going around saying, hey, you're a chiller. Hey, my dog, you're... You're identifying as part of a certain tribe. Mm. So my whole thing with being a narcissist is I want to colonize as many minds as possible. Because I realize if you want to change this country, if you want to change the world, you need to influence minds. Do you do it as Bob Marley and a musician? Do you do it as a billionaire? I'm currently doing it through religion. So your religion, what is your religion? Tupac did what? Through that, through music. Through music, yeah. He just didn't institutionalize it, but he did it. So I've got a concern. I'm going to answer you. I've got a concern with podcasts. And I, I know this is one of the agenda items because I've got agendas. I've got an, it's one of my agenda items for today. I don't want up and coming kids that are going to do podcasts to lose the essence of what we're doing here. Yeah. And it's one of the things I appreciated speaking to you guys because some of the things you said on our interview with Dusbu really touched me deep. One of them being not wanting to work with Spoo at a time because you were like, you were scared his brand was going to swallow what you're trying to do, which I was like, I fully fuck with that. The second one is saying, I, I, I stand just for the chillers. I work for the chillers. Fuck the politics, fuck the what what. If the chillers are like, this is where we're going. This is where we're going. Part of my fear with podcasts is like hip hop, Tupac. When things become a platform, the brands want to come here and then they want to formalize and commercialize and sooner rather than later, you guys have become censored. Mm. And now there's a huge crew and there's a, and there's going to be kids that are going to come and fucking eat you for lunch. Because the reason people are here is because they fucking crave authenticity and being real. That's the hip-hop we loved. Huh. The hip-hop we have now is fucking Diluted. bullshit. Diluted. You know, kids don't listen to hip-hop, but they listen to podcasts for this. And, we and if we lose this... I don't know where people are going to go next. So it's just a warning for kids that are coming. Fucking be yourself. Doesn't matter if people hate you or whatever. There's a world out there that is fucking yearning for just authenticity. Yes. Oh, and you're right. Yes, so already yes, we have brands we fight with who want to advertise, but they say, do. we're like, no, that's not how we do things. Like, no, you must have a guy in a costume coming. Like, no, we don't do that here. <laughs> you refused a lot of things. Yeah, we've yeah? refused, turned down a lot of things. Yeah. So are you going to answer me? What is your fuck, religion? Fuck brands, man. Mm. Uh, no, not fuck brands. I take that back. There's nothing wrong with brands. So with the religion, as an example, because my whole fascination is psychology and the mind. Yeah. Brands are not some random companies or old white men sitting somewhere. Today in 2022, in these companies, there are young, black, gents, chicks that fucking make decisions. And for some dumb, idiotic reason, they still fucking think like old white men, reputational risk. Your business is moving units and making fucking money. And all the same kids who use the same cell phone networks, who drink the same fucking alcohol, who they are watching these guys. So if you're not going to change these guys to be like, oh, welcome, guys. We just want to make sure. No, we can't say. You've lost it. So that your brand is safe or you think Which is in a bullshit. safe environment. Fuck the safety of the brand. And I also hate the stupidity of the kids, especially on Twitter, with this whole cancel culture bullshit. Because they part of the bullshit. 20 million kids are like, yo, fuck that bitch. Then five kids are like, yo, but he can't say bitch and it's wrong. And then... Other black kids are going to be like, yo, the brand picked up these things, you know, the reputational. Those 20 million kids don't give a flying fuck because yes. they fucking agree. Yeah. That's the whole point. That's how your Nklantla Laxes and your Operation Tutulas and everyone come about because people are tired of fucking pretending bullshit. Yeah. That's all. I, I believe that's the reason you guys have become so big and so important because people can hear the... Anyways, so religion... My religion, first and foremost, has got 30 principles currently, and I'm probably going to work on them because the Bible was also a work in progress up until a certain point. That's why this gospel is written by different niggas. <laughs> the first one is own your mind, which is literally become a critical thinker. Thinking has almost become a crime. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Independent yeah, yeah. thinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Having your own, your own opinion. opinion. Yo, versus the, the, the how popular, dare you? This is the popular opinion. Yo, how dare oh, you? Oh, fucking hell. She heard mentality. Yeah. So, Fuck. Um, so be a critical thinker. We saw what happened with COVID. You wouldn't think stuff like that would still happen now, but it's still happening where 
literally people get muzzled. And, and, and it's not about being right or wrong. It's about, it's about being right having right. your own Just, opinion. That's all. Mm. I'm not sure about this transgender thing. Oh my gosh, he's transphobic. I can't just say something. Again, this goes to podcasts. Podcasts must be allowed. And shout out to Dave Chappelle, guys like Joe Rogan, because they are still fighting for free speech. Yeah. You may not like what I have to say. It doesn't matter. But if I don't say it, there's a chance that the majority of the people, because I'll tell you now, South Africans are homophobic. The majority are homophobic. The majority are arguably xenophobic, um, very sexist. But you can't say it because the politicians and the media and the brands are like, no, we're very inclusive. It's a lie. But if, if we were to have the conversation, we could actually educate the homophobes and the xenophobes yes. and make them understand why their thinking is wrong. Yeah. But as long as we don't speak to them, just like white racists, you if you attack a white racist, it. if you attack a white racist, instead of engaging you, they go away into their corner and they become more racist. Yeah, You're like yes. breeding a virus in the dark. Mm. You know what I mean? So I'm saying open it up and let's chat and let's see how it goes. Um, critical thinking is one of them. Another one is transcending gender, race, nationality. I call it animalism, which means finding the animal in a person and not just looking at the outer surface. Mm. Part of them is things like intentional parenting, which we've kind of lost. We've outsourced parenting, which is like one of the most important jobs you'll ever have to the systems. Let the school Literally. dictate how you think. YouTube. Let the politicians, let YouTube. Let, let, yes, you know what yes. I mean? Um, part of it is about leadership. Part of it is about taking care of your body. Understanding that your body is the only real asset you'll ever own. Yeah. Ever. Oh, not fuck. money, not property, not anything. This is your transport, right. your weapon, your computer, your whatever. Yeah. This is it. You're born with this, you doubt. It's the only thing you'll ever have until you die. Huh. So taking care of your body... And more than anything, um, it is a cult. You know, I love owning definitions, by the way. Um, and I study definitions. So it is a cult because I'm a figure in charge of a belief system and Shit. it's centered around me, sure. But I think it's time for newer cults. It's time for good cults. It's, it's time for, you know, Jesus was a cult figure himself. That's why he was murdered. Do people so follow your, 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 your cult then? If Jesus was a cult figure, because Christ, Christianity is from Christ, right? Yeah. So you, is cult, Christianity cult, a, a from cult? Nigga's surname. Yeah, yeah. Is Christianity a cult? So cult plus time equals religion. So I can almost never be a religion now, officially, if you study history. Mm. I'll become a religion later. You're a cult after I'm for dead. now. I'm a cult uh. for now. That's why Jesus was murdered. He was a cult of 12 initially, with yeah. the, the apostles. So Dumb, chiller niggas who were just like, hey, dog, let's smoke shit and go see the people and what, what. And they went and they influenced the world. Nigga got killed and people were like, nah, this is fucking bullshit. They assassinated Park. I, f I fuck with Park. Nah, I fucking love Tupac. And all of a sudden, a hundred years later, people are like, no, I believe in the belief system of Tupac and what he stood for and liberating the black man. And you're like, but that nigga was a fucking, you know? So it, it's literally that. So if Jesus was, if Christianity started as a cult, then Jesus is not the son of God, and him walking water was somewhat of a, an optical illusion, a trick, or some trickery, and him making, turning fish and bread into... Because uh, then, if you take him, if you, if you un-God him, you're, then you're everything godly he did is, is, is a lie then. You're going to hell. And you must. No, I'm salvation. questioning. I'm questioning. You must. No, I'm oh. questioning salvation. you. Because then, no, you're right, if he right. was just a, a human, because I can't turn uh, two fish into two thousand or whatever number. I you can't can. walk on water. I can't walk on water. You can. How can I walk on water? No, it's fine. So, so you're right. Um, the reason why I am important and the reason why people like me are important is because we're shaking minds in a very uncomfortable way that they've never been shaken in before. Getting you to actually literally question things like, why do we celebrate Christmas in a fat Santa with snow when there's no snow here and we don't have reindeers? Like, this is actually not a normal African holiday. It's for people that have snow at that time. That's why even now we're trying to bring back African New Year to be in September, which is spring for us, because the current calendar we have, the Gregorian calendar, is in line with other belief systems mm -hmm. elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Roman, the, the world Roman. that we live in, going back to unpacking um, the world and what I'm fascinated about as a, as a nerd, we are chimpanzees, basically. 
uh, I don't really believe in evolution theory, but I'm trying to paint a picture. We are chimpanzees that at some point found a way to communicate outside of just basic, pass me the banana, what, what, you know. We found a way to collaborate in how we communicate. You fetch the bananas, I'll fetch the grandeur gin, and then we'll fucking meet up and have a fucking banana and grandeur party. And then we learned f- ways to communicate, whether it's book, printing, the internet, so that other chimps in the fucking UK in Manchester <laughs> can find out, fuck, there's a fucking banana and grandeur party come and host it in Manchester, you know? So we became that. And in doing that, we came up with concepts like clothing. If my hair is not strong enough, but I'm cold, I can get clothing. And, 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 and. Fundamentally where we are now, so those are basics, clothing, shelter, we don't live in caves, the food we eat is processed, the meds, because we collaborated as scientists. But where we are now is we live in some type of a fiction where there's real things that we're drinking, but then there's story which then colonizes your mind, telling you your Zulu. You're Venda, you're, I'm Venda, but my dick is not that big. So maybe I'm not really Venda because that's just a story. So people have told stories and one of the greatest stories ever told is the Bible. And just like Bitcoin, you need enough people to buy into the same story for it to become real. No one can ever validate if they were there. So a hundred years from now, Pastor Likaku or Likau, I'm not sure what his surname is. There's that pastor who resurrected a guy from the dead. Oh, Alf Likau. Alf Likau. Oh, yeah, yeah, Alf Likau, yeah. Congolese you would know, guy. ghost lady, you would know. <laughs> Vendor guy. Congolese guy, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, okay. <laughs> yes, <clears throat> church girl. <laughs> so, a so hundred years from now, if we didn't have internet, if we didn't have conspiracy theories, if we didn't have thinkers, the story would have been like there was a pastor somewhere who resurrected a dead man. And the guy literally woke up and... He ate and he was shivering. True. And you're like, God, what no the video fuck? To capture it, Boom. how clean he looks, Boom. how from the Vaseline, there's no video to Boom. capture that. What is evidence to poke holes into the yeah. whole? So the, 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 the Jesus story could literally mean anything. The nigga could have walked on water, he could have been a surfer. Nigga was fucking surfing there. People are like, oh fuck, he's walking on water. Imagine if you went back in time with the cell phone. And I can communicate with you. And I'm like, hey, dog, I think there's a thunderstorm coming. I'm looking at the weather. And you go back in time and you tell people, guys, I think yo, my, my phone just said there's thunder oh, coming. Oh, let me pray like, for, for rain. This and nigga's this fucking insane. So and what do you that? think about uh, Upsango, more traditional uh, 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 religion, like traditional, yeah? I said I'm So in my religion, I'm God. Uh, and I need to start by explaining that as well. Again, I wanted to say story. Story being Jesus the money that we use, story being the laws that we have, you literally stop at a robot like a crazy person just because the law has told you. There's no car, it's unsafe at night, but there's a red light there and you're like, let me stop. It's like you're crazy. If someone from the past came to see you, they're like, why are you stopping here? No, because the laws, they've literally captured your mind. So the whole concept of a God and why I want to be God is because the idea of a God has been peddled through story and books. What is a God? No, a God is a, a higher being. It's literally just story. But what that God figure can do, like a Spider-Man, like a Batman, they can tell you where you come from, where you go after you die. They control the weather. They have a plan for your life. They are the Alpha and the Omega. They care about you. They made you. And everyone believes in that. So what I want is I want to be the person that when people are like, where do we come from? Where are we going? It's like, well, Penwell says, what do you think is going to happen with, well, Penwell says, not because I'm right, but just as an alternative voice. That's why we have so many different religions. And one of the belief systems is Ubungoma, for example. It's a belief system. Before the colonizers came with the Bible and Jesus and those things, Africans had their own belief systems. They had yeah. Unkulunku, Ulum, Vilngangi, etc. And then we had Amadlos, which are our ancestors, and they come through. You've probably never seen your great, great, great grandfather. But if we were to find a picture of him, we're like, oh, Hopefully. fuck, this is Mac G. Mm. How does your body know what you're supposed to look like when you come out? It's because of inherited mm-hmm. buildup. And that's physical. Oh, you look like your mom. You look like your dad. No one ever wonders, how do you, why do you think the way you do? That's also inherited software. That's what we call amadrosi. So when you say, ah, oh, my voice, I don't think I should go there, dog. Something feels funny in my gut feeling. It's literally that inherited programming of decision making. Mm. I'm scared of this. I don't know why I'm so fast, nigga. I don't know why I just love reading. It's inherited from your ancestors just as your body. If your father was a super athlete, you're like, 
I'm probably built like an athlete because my dad was an athlete. Mm -hmm. I'm probably smart because so do my you mom practice, used to read a lot. Do you practice Ukpasa and all those traditional things? Hey, I'm impressed, man. <laughs> <laughs> do you practice that? Pasha, I didn't think you knew Pasha. Jeez. Okay. No, I hear you. I He's hear from Park Town. That's why he's just surprised. <laughs> do, you, do you practice that? So going back to Ubungoma, and um, uh, so God is someone who basically has the answers. Let's put it that way. Like Google is God. If you're like, I'm not really sure, ask Google. What's the weather like? Instead of praying, ask Google. Yeah. Google will tell you. So that's what I'm trying to do with my religion and just offer an alternative. That's all. Just like Ipatu is an alternative to Nike and Are you going to answer any of my things. questions? Hey, I'm going to answer you. My no, no, no. He goes, 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 goes and answers it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like he's been doing that, yeah. yeah. So I don't have all the answers, but I just have my opinions. Do you, Pasa? I have my opinions, which inform my religion. So when someone asks me, do you believe in Ubungom and Nizangom, I can give you my offering of what that means for human beings. Ubungoma, for a lot of people, is basically he healing through song. Ngoma is a song. Yeah. A lot yeah. of it has gotten Spot lost. On. Just like Spot you Lobolo on. today, you'll be like, but you Lobolo is 50,000. Lobolo is never money. It's morphed. So Ubungoma was healing through song, and then there was singing, there was uh, herbs, ikupu. and ikupu, for example. That's why you get healing through music, yeah. as an example. You're like, fuck, I was listening to this Beyonce, and I just started crying. But we've lost that. I think there is a place for stuff like that, but not the way it is currently done. And I do understand that once you've studied enough psychology with human beings yeah. and you have experience, if someone comes to you, Pen, I've got a prob problem with my marriage. Nice. You know, I, I have in my head some idea of what your problem may be. I can literally be like, hey, this aim, Tanam Yazi. Oh my gosh, he hit me and we don't have money. Uh -huh. That's just experience with human beings. That's, that's why scam artists are so cool. Oh, that's, why, oh, yeah. that's why politicians are so powerful. They've mastered human psychology. Yeah. And you're just like, oh my gosh, this guy's like a prophet. It's like, I can kind of see your demeanor. Where are you from? No, Puma Wazul. Hey, yes, I want Bagazul. Nyabas Pedama Bebambu Put. Oh, fuck, yes. That's what we had growing up. How do you know? This guy's a fucking yeah, it's genius. Obvious. It's like, no, yeah, man. No. It's just experience with human beings. So, the good Sangomas are the ones that are amazing at telling story, that understand human psychology like a psychologist, and that'll um, prescribe certain things that feel like they heal you. Mm. That's all it is. But in terms of supernatural powers, and they can tell you what what, and they. No, so it's for, for me it's a no. So I, I don't do the things of Ukpasha and what, what. And part of the question about Zulu and the reason why I left Zulu, going back to the first question, being Zulu in the labels means, and Zulus can argue with me till they fucking purple in the face. Being Zulu means first and foremost, you pay homage to the Zulu king as your leader. This is my king, Umisu Zulu, by for example. By definition. Number two, yeah. you're meant to be from the land of Zulu. So if you were born in Cape Town, you're like, oh, apparently my dad says I'm fucking Zulu, bro. You are not born on the land of Guazulu. You don't see the king as your king, as your leader. Number two, you don't dress as Zulu's dress, where you can be like, hey, are you from India? I just saw the way you were. You don't dress as a Zulu. Your diet is not a Zulu diet. Your belief systems now are not Zulu. We speak English. We dress in fucking... Shame, man. Manchester United. Yeah, when I was in the UK, I bought the... Hi, 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 hi. Hey, Safalero, UK! <laughs> <laughs> I, hope no, I hope no one ever fucking invites you guys overseas again. You're a Safa. Now, they're not inviting us. We're going wherever we want to go now. You know? We're going anywhere now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so for me, we've, we've lost it. And then some idiotic, and I'm going to hit the Zulu people. I'm, I'm lucky I can do this because I, I'm Zulu. I was raised Zulu. They're like, why do, you Zulu. why do you still speak as Zulu if you're no longer Zulu? I'm like, I'm not fucking British, but I speak English. It's a language of communication and connection. So if I fucking wear uh, whatever from China, that means that's, again, it's because our thinking is so fucking clogged. It needs to open up. We need to move away from these labels if, if they don't serve us. If my grandfather is Nelson Mandela, everywhere I go, I feel like, you know, Mandela, you know, the, because it opens doors. If my surname yeah. is, let's say, for example, a Zuma, and it's like, oh, Zuma's corrupt, he was arrested. Hey, you change your surname. You're like, hey, I'll fucking take my wife's surname. You be Ukumalu. 
Aren't you Zuma? No, hey, I'm not going to come out. I'm not going to come out. Yeah, because with the Mandela's, all the grandkids are like Mandela's. Technically, they're not using their father's surname. They're not using their father's surname. All of them. Yeah, because the, Mandela because didn't, the had surname one son who died. carries weight. True. Because the surname carries weight. So things that no longer serve you, we're not fucking trees. We're not fucking stuck in the ground. We were designed to move. Our ancestors fucking moved. That's why we don't call ourselves the Ndu or the Nguni. Not because we hate it, because we're fucking sellouts. Because we've moved. Shaga came and he, in effect, colonized a group of people under an umbrella term of the Zulu people. You don't have to be fucking stuck there like you can't move. Fucking move. Why do you want to have 20 kids? Is that in my bio? No, no, but you did bio? say that you don't drink, you don't smoke, but you really want to have a lot of kids. And you, how many do you have now? I'm a father of... Um, let me put on my serious voice because fathers are meant to be... Uh, I'm a father of six very beautiful children, very healthy children, very happy children. I think that's very important that our kids are all with happy and mother. healthy. Yeah, with one mother. Huh? With one mother. How's he? I'm Mike. You sound like a How many? No, I'm joking. I'm how, joking. I'm how joking. How many joking. mothers? So uh, I have six children from four mothers. Wow. And I do have a desire to get to 20 children. Um, it's just an arbitrary number. To be honest, I just want a lot of children. Um... Again, oh, shout out to Sopoza. Um, the short answer, officially, on the record, is is no. No. Oh. And I'm only saying this to protect By them. By the way, the question was, are you still with the mothers? Because your mic was off, sorry. Oh, was it off? Yeah, I had turned it off. The vaccine is kicking. Oh. <laughs> Where's the vaccine now? <laughs> By the fingers. Oh. It has pulled down the wrong fader. <laughs> we need a vaccine. Yo, vaccine scanner. <laughs> Chilas market. Anyone, vaccine scanner. You know? Yes. Yeah, bro. So, so you're, you're not no with longer. all the mothers. Okay. So, officially on the record, um, I am not with the mothers. And I'm only saying this to protect them. Um, I have got the biggest respect for women oh. in particular. Not... Not necessarily just because I was largely raised by a single mom, but because Shut for up, me, man. you know, the whole gender thing is a conversation we Thank need you. to have because it's potentially destructive. My mom is incredibly strong. I see so many women that are fucking strong. The idea that I marry a strong woman and she has to take my surname, whose origin I don't even know, I think is rubbish. But out of respect for the mothers of my children, they have never asked for me to speak about them, to post them, and for that reason, I try to keep them away from my rubbish. Okay. It's just me. The one thing I will not respect if they were to ever ask, they've never asked, is don't post my kids, don't. I'm like, nah, fuck that. These are my kids as well. Yeah. So if I want to post them, if I want to speak about them, I will never hide my children. So why do you want to have kids? It goes back to the body thing, I think, and to what I was saying about how I see human beings. Part of the colonization project, some people call it the white supremacist project, was to divide us, make us hate each other, make us hate what we do, uh, mm. make us not see value in land, make us fight over tribal, gender, whatever the fuck, you know. Today, we've got a 40% graduate unemployment problem. Mm. Those are graduates. We've got a 72% youth unemployment problem. These are now not kids that are fucking crippled and can't walk and can't speak. These are fucking able-bodied human beings that can't fucking plant a tomato and just eat. That can't plant a tree. You plant a tree once and every year, winter, there's nachis. There's, we can't do that because our minds and our education has been stripped of us. So in the same way, I believe our bodies are the only assets we'll ever have. I believe that having children is the only real thing you can ever build that is worth something. The and only if, assets if, you can leave behind. Some people want 20 cows. Someone 20 properties. Someone 50 Ferraris. You guys want all these fucking useless things. The most valuable thing on this planet, in this world we live in, is human beings. So why not make human beings and turn them into something special? Oh. And I oh. think, again, I'm a narcissist. And, and how do you guarantee I, that they'll turn into something special? Ah, there's no guarantee. How do you guarantee that the car will survive winter? Hey. You don't. Uzuma didn't know that he was going to have Tutuzana, for example, or Um. Angas Numukuku, the lady that's behind... Yeah the wife and these other shows, uh, the production company, I think it's stained class. He didn't know, you know. I think, and Elon Musk, this is what yeah, he's trying Uzzalo, to say. Uzzalo, well, yeah. People don't get it. This is what Elon Musk is trying to say. And I'm going to articulate it in a way he hasn't. Poor. <laughs> yeah, I'll get tracked for this. Hope you're watching, Elon Musk. Jeez. Poor, ugly, <laughs> retarded, 
useless, dumb brain people fuck like there's no tomorrow. And they end up with eight, nine kids that have to fucking depend on the state. Useless. Good looking, intelligent, innovative people end up with like one or two kids because it's the responsible thing to do. If you feel your genetics, LeBron James, Beyonce Knowles, Tiger, if you feel your genetics are worth something or the world feels they're worth something, go fucking breed. Oh, damn. Go find other great genetics and fucking breed so the world can be better. We need politicians and leaders today. They're not there because the most talented kids, and I saw this in the last uh, um, episode as well, the most talented kids are leaving South Africa. Yeah. Go fucking breed and make amazing kids. There's no guarantee that they'll be great, but you'll just do your best as you do with anything else and hope for that. But don't be like, I'm not going to have yeah. kids because I'm... Chances are if you're saying stuff like that, you're probably inferior and you're weak and you probably shouldn't have kids. So fucking keep it to one or none. <laughs> but for the rest of us who think we fucking shit gold... Yeah. Go fucking make babies. Hey man, no one no, will remember you. I need five of these motherfuckers by next year with different women. <laughs> fucking yeah. I get you though, right? I mean, it's unpopular and people won't like it, and I understand it's why. It's very unpopular. It's an unpopular opinion. No, I I fully understand why. Look, the di- the dynamics of the world we live in. I can't have kids. I don't have money. Four generations ago, we didn't have money. What's yeah, your view on money? You know, uh. I can't have kids. The world is a dangerous place. <sighs> Fuck, man. The world is probably the safest it's been in history. Really? With the things that happen out there, if I'm angry with Saul, I don't stab him with a spear. <laughs> if I want to fucking buy out MacG's property, I do it like in a business way. I don't fucking come with my Hostile tribe takeover. and then come and murder him. Zulu. So today, yeah. like, it's, it's because of social media, it's because of mainstream media, and we're inundated with this shit. Oh my gosh, someone got killed. And even now, I'm waiting till the end of the year with these tavern killings. I'm waiting to see the murder stats. Because if they're not worse than last year, that means it was just fucking media propaganda. That's what happened with the COVID vaccine, Hot for air. example. When you looked at the data, you're like, but less people died this year. So what fucking pandemic are you talking about? Mm. This is propaganda. 6,600 people died in South Africa or were murdered, particular murder between January and March this year, three months. From February till June, which I think is about five months, about 4,000 people were killed in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. 6,000 here, we're not in a war zone. 4,000 there. But look at the mileage they're getting. Wow. You'd swear it's fucking bombing. Nah, so it's propaganda. So uh, I try and steer away from some of that fucking shit, man. Your view on money, what do you think about money? Did I finish my point? Yeah, yeah. Five kids, tonight you're going to... Hey, when you're Anyways, please no, but you go, said if go you, multiply. You think you got the good genes. Why don't you, you know, give it, give go it, forth, it to, go my gift to the, to the earth? Go my gift to the world when I die. Exactly. Sure. But your view on money? Um, fiat money. That's the one you use. It is now. fiat money. It's fiat money. A lot of people now. don't know the differences. No, they don't. There's a history of money. School so though. I'm going to recommend a book for people that are readers. It's called The Ascent. A S C. The Ascent of Money. By Neil Ferguson <laughs> ah, <laughs> sent, from yeah. the UK, a cent. Um, Neil Ferguson, for those people that fucking hate reading, he's got a lacquer documentary on YouTube, same name, The Ascent of Money, which gives the history of money. Um, as I said, my whole thing is colonizing minds and influencing people because I want to build a better world mm. and I don't want to do it through politics or whatever. Money is just another tool of mind control in 2022. Back in the day, money was convenient. So I wouldn't have to fucking herd all my cows to come and get a bottle of grandeur, for example. And Mac is like, yeah, but dog, you know, you must bring five cows. Today I can be like, look, I'm going to give you a piece of paper which entitles you to five cows and you can cash it out at any time and get a steak and get mince and get vors. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So what's happened, unfortunately, the people that run the world, the elite, the Illuminati, they took what was a great concept, because this is not normally what happens with rubbish, evil leaders. They took a great concept and then they added aspects to it that fucked it up. So you look at podcasts, great concept, education, reaching the kids, and then all of a sudden regulation. Oh, are, you a regu- are you a regulated podcast? Are you part of the podcast association? But you know, you can't say this, BCCSA, you guys have to, all of a sudden you've happen. taken a, a good thing and you've fucked happen. it up. Mm. So with money, they added things like interest. 
interest, like Jesus walking on water is literally making money out of thin air. They introduce something called profit and people don't understand profit is no different to interest. It's just as evil. How do I expect you to just, I get something for five rand and you must buy it for 10. Where's the other five rand coming from? Because you can't plant something that's just going to grow double. This isn't it the reward for my sweat and so time? This is the story Since part. the body is the only asset I own for the usage of this asset to make this thing and bring it to you. I'm going to take a lot. You want a pair of sneakers they're only found in France. I bring it to you in jo Joburg. Shouldn't I be rewarded for that? And that's Transport. the profit. No. So again, the reason we're muzzling podcasts is because there's a child that committed suicide. They were watching podcasts. They got depressed, so to protect them. And you're like, no, nah, but that's bullshit. That's not the... All I'm saying is some of these concepts, they may even have good intentions, but they have fucked up what money used to be. So interest, profit, something called speculation. Speculation is, mm, I think Bitcoin will go up next week. Oh, I think the shares of Tesla will go down. And all of a sudden, the value of something is just based on a hunch. And if you're a market analyst, you can literally go online and tell people, guys, I foresee turbulent times and all of a sudden the value of a company goes down mm. yeah, based that, on that nothing that happens in the stock market you know what yeah. i mean so speculation is another one and then inflation inflation is how rich people steal money from the poor and middle class it's it's the best way they use so the increase in fuel the increase in food it's inflation they'll tell you oh, but the price of things is always going up it's not they make it go up so that your 10 rand this year is worth less in four years time yes that's all it is. But money as a concept is not bad. It's just been bastardized. And today, obviously, we've moved from gold stat from bartering gold standard, gold standard to fiat, fiat, fiat to money. where we are now with yeah. digital, and, digital and crypto. Yeah. And what do you think about relationship of money and black people? Do you think we know how to handle money? Uh, another plug, uh, Kosher Money on YouTube uh, for people that want to watch. There's two interviews in particular that this guy Eli does. It's a, it's a Jewish platform. Uh, Eli it's Kosher Langer, Money. I think, yeah. Let me see. Kosher Money. So one of the interviews is with a brilliant guy called Rabbi Manus Friedman. So I'm a huge student of all types of leadership. Jewish, Zangoma, Jesus. I study everything because there's a, there's a thread when you start studying these guys. There's a lot of similarities. Yeah. So Rabbi Manus Friedman speaks about the spirituality of money because they speak about literally why I choose richer than other people. Another one is with a guy called Naftali. I just forgot his, his surname, but people will find it on Kosher Money. There's a spirituality aspect to money that Jews understand and that they respect. Black people, the way money was brought into, it, into us and into our lives was traumatic. Ish. That's why people hate Afrikaans. Afrikaans wasn't sold to us, which you know, as you Afrikaans can prod, can you a lekker bottle grandia cry? So you're like, hey, fuck, I love Afrikaans. I get drunk because I know Afrikaans. They brought it traumatically and you fucking hate it. So with us, the whole money concept was brought in through colonizers who stripped you of your land, took you away from your family so that you're forced to go and make money to fucking pay tax. And when you say money to blacks, money is debt. It's debit orders. Ish. You know what I mean? So it's traumatic. So from a spiritual Jeez, perspective... Bro, fucking hell, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, fuck! Bro, fucking hell! Sorry, Penguel, he hit you, man. Like you, fuck! That was gonna be a three-hour show. Fuck that shit. Yo, bro, you're right, man. You're right, dog. This is, this is how religious Cause, leaders. Cause, this is how religious leaders. Honest, when people, if we were trading in cows, this is how religious leaders. If we were trading in cows today, Africa would be the richest country on, uh, like, uh, continent in the world because we're trading in. But money was introduced as a result of being stripped from everything, and suddenly yeah. we need to this concept, this foreign concept. And uh, go on, man. Sorry, bro, but <laughs> I, I, I had an epiphany, dog. <laughs> I had an epiphany. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you again? Um, are you? I know, no, no, no. Nah, 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 hey, nah, 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 nah. nah it's being said. It's being said. <laughs> now you speak. I agree, disagree with a lot of things, but th that. The money one, oh, and how it, it was interesting. Okay, let was, him speak, let him speak. It was a tragedy. <laughs> Fucking hell, dog. So in that also, you know, um, uh, did I, did I uh, um, listen to you right? There was some, I think there was some uh, a video where you, it's almost like you were praising Afri Forum or praising Afrikaners. What's that? Explain. Okay. You. Did you finish get, your point yeah, about money? Get did into you, it after the money thing, bro. Yeah, you finished. I disturbed you the money thing, mm -hmm. bro. Yeah. I, money was introduced to us mm -hmm. under traumatic or whatever yeah, ways. Yeah. So going back, money as a tool is not a bad thing, but it's been fucked up by the people. Type of, 
Zimbabwe was wealthy, land, gold, whatever. Overnight, the Zim Red dollar was worthless. Africa. Overnight, the Zim dollar was worthless. Not because they lost anything, not because they were hit by a bomb, because someone just said so. So as long as you understand that there are people that can control that value, it becomes problematic. For the poor in particular, I think this is part of the solution. Going back a little bit. So traumatic, we don't have money, what, what. We need to go back to bartering. We need to go back to bartering mm. where we don't have money. If you have money, cool. If you have something else, cool. If you don't, barter. Be like, my dog, I don't have anything, but I can come wash your car. How much is that worth to you? Oh, it's worth a bottle of grandeur. If you can wash my car or five cars, I'll give you a bottle. That's literally value. So if we can move from money to value, I think we'll understand. And black people need to, because Jews do this, we need to get comfortable speaking about money. How much do you earn? How much did you get? Yes, we've got those problems. People now want your money, Bro. black tax. It's yeah. fine. Let's work through it. Tell your family I make 100000 a month. Let them get fucking entitled to your money and what, what, and then tell them no. And if they're willing to listen, Thank you. E explain to them. Thank you, My bro. bond is 20,000. My it. car is my, and I have, yes. to, so that's why I can only give you 200 rand. Yeah. Mm. But no. this is the installment. This is the insurance. This is the fuel. That's and why I'm going to give you of you And then we start learning. Yes. Also. And my budget is 10,000 or 2,000. And there's 100 of you asking. I can't. I'm done. Yeah. Okay. So so we, we need to have these conversations because they're important. So that's my view just on, on money. Just in closing, I wanted to say, what you were saying about we'd be rich because of cows is how I feel about children. You know, so if we could trade cows, all of us would be trying to get cows, as many cows as possible. Because I see value in human beings and human labor and human ingenuity and innovation. That's what I want to have. And we've got the strongest genes and like genetically, you know, Africans. Black people. Africans, generally. Yeah, it's a, it's a diss, that thing, but you're right. I mean, we're at the first civilization. Let's get into yeah. the first university on earth. Let's get into the politics, strongest. which Afro goes Forum. into yes. Afri Forum, Orania. I've seen you've praised them a couple of times. On, Damn, on, you've yeah. praised Orania, fam. Yeah, with I the have, load have. shading, because uh, they've got their own... Um, yeah, he'll explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fuck it out, dog. Sorry, just to close, you know, the, the props you're giving black people, um, they, they bittersweet, because yes, first civilization, whatever you want to call it, genetically we're strong, we don't get skin cancer. But that was used. Handle the elements. But essentially it's like you're describing a horse. Exactly. Or a cow. You can be in the sun for long and weather the storm and you can lift heavy things. That's, how, that's how build. slavery that's happened. That's how we can build more. Sa slavery happened. Tool. No, yeah. no, no. no. That we can no, the, to enrich us. The cool thing is we have to take that back, back. to use it, yes. yes. For but us, I'm saying when, I mean. when people say that it's bittersweet for that reason, because the oh. world is run, the world is run on mental prowess and not yes. so much physical. So when you say we're genetically what what are you saying we're the Even smartest? Mentally, we're the no. first university, like the oldest. Yeah, that's, a, that's a bullshit story. That you know that story. We built pyramids. My father didn't build any fucking pyramid. I refuse to take credit for bullshit. Yeah. I didn't really create because it becomes a pacifier. It helps you keep quiet. Exactly. Because you're like, but we used to be kings and queens and don't Hey Ness, Abu Ness. Let's talk about now. What have you built? What are you doing now? Let's talk about that. Nothing. That's what Ukanye is trying to say. That like, fuck history, dog. Can we speak about the future? What are we doing? You get people to always be like, but we used to be kings and pharaohs. It's a pacifier. We used to be great. Hey, my dad used to have his spire. Where is he now? Where is his spire? Nothing. Let's talk about now. The people that are moving are the people that are here. I want to build a pyramid. So when people say, hey, we built the pyramids, I'll be like, no, I built a pyramid. I can show you. Don't tell me about Egyptians. I don't fucking know those people. Anyway, so Afri Forum and Orania. The world we live in, um, by the way, the, the danger of listening to me, Saul, because this is the danger of listening to any past and any politician and any... Some people have like a master of storytelling and they listen to you. Oh, yeah. I'm a shy. I'm a shy. After that, bad and gain. All of us are like, no, man. You know what Penn said? 20 kids. Ah, now you're listening to that guy. Ah, he's fucking feeding you. And you're like, no, but listen to him. He, that's what happens when you get close to people that have an ability to, you know. Anyways. <laughs> so what was, what were you just saying there? We mustn't listen to you. <laughs> no, I'm not shy. Yeah. I'm saying it's, I'm <laughs> saying it's very dangerous. Yeah. It's it's very dangerous. dangerous. We're in the spell now. Eh? I'm, I'm fooling it. I'm, I'm fooling it. Like motivational speakers. Yeah. When they come to private media, they go there. Yeah. And then you think you can conquer the world. Ah, three days later. Yeah, God. Ah. <laughs> Open your bed, fuck. Yeah, there's always a danger, This is me danger, after with 20 kids, eh? Hey? Yo, so, now I'm only saying this because penalism, my religion, the first principle is own your mind. Mm, mm. That means take out pen, hey! 
And then go home and, and, and chew over yourself, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then come back and be like, okay, dog, I hear you for you. I didn't hear you there. For me, mm. I'm here. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So I meet a lot of people that are fans of my videos and stuff. And they say stuff like, hey, dog, I love your shit. I don't fully agree with you. And I'm like, as soon as you say that, that makes me happy. Mm. You can't tell me you agree with everything. Because yeah. it's like, your mind. are you fucking crazy? Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Um, we live in a world where you have to kind of pick sides. And I think it's part of what's destructive with the world. Are you a man? Are you a woman? Are you black? Are you white? Pronouns. Are you RET? White monopoly capital? Are you ANC? Are you EFF? Are you... Yeah. The, the world we live in is, is very dynamic, you know? And in being dynamic, and one of the skills I've tried to master is the ability to isolate good people from bad people, number one, regardless of race. So I can say you're a good black or a bad black, you're a good white, you're a bad white, and do that. Number two, I can isolate good deeds and bad deeds. So Mac G beat up someone. Oh, hey, he's a criminal. He spent time in prison. And I'm like, no, I want to know more about this Pop-cast. guy. No, but he's an ex-con. Yeah, I hear you. I heard that. Sure. What else? Yeah, apparently he built like a thing for kids. I'm like, no, that was a good deed. Yeah, but he's an ex-con. I agree, but he is not a block. Gaten you can't McKenzie. just say no. So it's R. Kelly. Gaten McKenzie. Like, like R. Kelly. Fucked up person. Yeah. Man. And people force you. Zuma, Ramaphosa. Ah, so you love Zuma. That means you agree with the looting. Like, no, don't fucking act like I'm a fucking idiot. I can tell you that I love Zuma singing, but I maybe don't agree with some of his policies. Mm. I love the fact that he has a lot of kids, but I'm not really happy with the deals maybe they did with the, the Guptas and some of the mm. people in the back. Mm. Uh, you know what I mean? So... When it comes to white people, Afrikaans people in particular, and the apartheid system in general, I have the ability to park my emotions aside and, and indulge fully. Oh, that's you beautiful. Know? Um, and I'm going to speak about another controversial figure, and I'll say this now because podcasts are still relatively free spaces. Adolf Hitler came into Germany at a time yeah. like what South Africa is going through yeah. now. They had like 30% unemployment. You know, They didn't have businesses. They were fucked. The people were despondent. And he came in as a Mashaya. You know, and he was hitting the greatest. The Führer was fucking amazing with the cab. You know, like Emali, my hey, he gets the people excited. Cracks yeah. a joke, yeah, he, you know. I'd like to isolate what he did to the Jews. I think it was atrocious, the murdering. The Holocaust. The, the Holocaust, mm. the gas chambers, the concentration camps. That was all bad. But then you have to look at the fact that Hitler industrialized Ju- um, Germany. Volkswagen is the biggest car company in the world VW today. VW Beetle, he came, he, it's the, his, the Volkswagen, yeah, the Volkswagen Beetle, Beetle, yeah. Beetle, he commissioned Ferdinand yeah. Porsche, who was a car designer at the time. Yeah, to, he, uh, he owned Porsche. Porsche, yeah. To, to create Porsche. a vehicle for the people. So, for people that don't know, if you're not Afrikaans, maybe, folk is folk, people. Yes, Wachen, people's wagon. Wachen is a, wagon. is a wagon. So it's he said, make wagon. the people's car. Yeah. The Volkswagen is the people's car. Literally. And they did that. Ferdinand went on to build his own Porsche brand. Yeah. They actually, the family still owns a stake of Volkswagen as an example. There's other Mm. big businesses in Germany. Hugo Boss used to make um, uniform for for Nazi Germany as an example. Those are things that were good things. They were bad things, but they were good things. And he reduced unemployment to almost nothing. He increased social welfare, especially for women. You know, he invested a lot in skills development. We speak now about FET colleges and TVET and skills. Hitler was doing that then. That's why Germany became such a boss nation. And to this day, they're the third third biggest economy in the world after, uh, I think, America and Japan. Or China, sorry, America and China, sorry. Then it's Germany and Japan. You know what I mean? So I can do that. So with with the apartheid government... The apartheid government came in. They took over from the British, the colonizers. Mm -hmm. And they realized, look, the world doesn't like us. You must understand, Afrikaners were like the... (laughs) They were like the colors of Europe. They were the mixed breeds. No one wanted them. They were a bit dumbish. They were a bit... They were scumish. That's why they had to go somewhere. They were immigrants. That's why they came here. They were the foreigners, undocumented foreigners here. The Dutch, the French, the Germans, etc. Yes, the French. So they came here to come and look for a new life. They took over from the British. They started off as farmers. They realized the importance of growing your own food. And then once they took over from the British, some of the world didn't like them. And they got sanctioned. They're like, we need to fucking do our own shit. And they went, um, I think it may have been Jan Smuts. They went and they commissioned an Afrikaans guy, Hendrik van der Beel, who went to study in Germany, engineering. He came back. They came and they drafted a plan. The, the apartheid government's economic plan is probably one of the best economic plans you'll ever see. So with Hendrik van der Beel, they decided to create their own power, which was cheap. 
it wasn't for profit, it was at cost. And they built ESCOM. And then they're like, we need our own fuel. And they built Cecil. We need our own weapons. And they built Arms Corps. Our own bank. We need our own, that was the Pruder point, but it was Afrikaans people as well. We need our own shit. We need to take care of ourselves, our grains with Afri and, and, and. Mm. So they literally built the economy we have today. And if you look at the infrastructure they built, a lot of it is still standing. Mm. It's being destroyed by the current government, but it's still standing because it was that fucking good. The railway systems. But, but also, it's also benefit, only to benefit, benefit the few. The few yeah. yeah, they yeah. built it for 5%. You see, if they did that ESCOM, the, the, the SESO to benefit the majority, fuck, would be a first world country, like literally. Yeah. But only to benefit a few. And that's a yeah. very small few. So is that why you appreciate and uh, like Orania, Afroforum, like what she was saying? So uh, I'll, I want to answer this um, benefit a few, but I'll, I'm going to finish this first. So I have the ability to unemotionally be able to take the good from someone, even if they call called bad people. So yeah, I can yeah. appreciate what the Afrikaans people did in building a strong economy and infrastructure. So I think, I think most of us can, though. Okay. So the reason I, I admire, it's important that I use this term admire, I admire Afriforum and Orania. And for me, I wish in particular black people could actually remove their emotions and study these people. These were people that were disgruntled for whatever reason. And they said, we're fucked. We're not in the majority. There's a fucking black government. It doesn't matter. How can we solve this problem? But and they went... To remove emotions. It's... I'm saying it's not that easy. Oh, when it's you not easy at all. When you say to... It's not people easy at all. Especially when you're on the receiving end yeah, of yeah. history and yeah. the brutality of it. Yeah. Afrikaner is not... Blacks, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's really not easy. But it's, it's a process that needs to happen like the money process. Mm. Because if we don't fix it, we will always be victims. If you're like, yeah, but my mom was beaten up when I was five. And that's your whole story. You're fucking 45. You've got your own family. Yeah, but oh, mama, I'm shy. I'm like, hey, dog, fucking catch a wake up. Mm. For how long are you going to be a victim? The Jews were victims. They said, okay, fuck this shit. We're going to fuck shit up. Yeah, the Jews they, were they're not like poor victims. today saying, yeah, but you saw what the Germans did Holocaust. to us. You have to fucking move. Mm. You can be emotional. You can hate them. It's fine. But be willing to take some of the... Orania people said, let's buy a piece of land. And they built their own what what. It's like a stained city. It's like a... I wish black townships could build fences and control access Yeesh. and decide who runs the economy in there. Ooh. That's like a form of Orania. You know what I mean? That, that, you see, oh. now, 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 now we're talking. Yeah, that. And we do shit to benefit our people. Oh. Imagine the clothes of force, And we're not waiting for grants, no one. nothing. No, but the clothes of force, though. They're like, you gotta put your kids in these schools. And do you know how much and, money oh. goes around for us, though, bro? Too much. Hey. Hey, Varani for Pe. Hey. Um, for the yes. Gates. Yes. Yeah. Perima race. Varani Perima race. Yeah, like before the, the Varani funny. entry. Varani Perima race. From the highway, there's only one way to get into Fosloo. Yes. Perima race, and then there's Spread View. That's it. There's two highways. Sure. What's it's both the N3. Sure. But Spread View and the Perima race of ramp. Otherwise, like no don't get I like no to put my force. Mm. Okay. <laughs> but, but there's like a few routes yeah, yeah, yeah. into any township throughout South Africa. You're you're so right. Orania's got its own Who currency. Who can build a mall? Because we complain you about know? the white the malls. Chris Han is owned by white white people. It's a mall in Forslo. Yeah. And we complain, ah, it's owned by white people. Yeah. But if the blacks in eh, Forslo would say, Asaki Molie too. Right? You said anyone can do it. Isn't that what you said just now? Jesus, yeah. Asaki Molie too. So, so that's what I appreciate about Orania. They came up with their own solutions. With Afri Forum, and Afri Forum is, for me, more urgent. Afri Forum is Afrikaans people in particular. And Afrikaans people, when they say it, they tell you it's non-racial. So anyone can call themselves Afrikaans. You can be colored. Afri Forum has got black members, by the way. I know some of them personally. Okay. You know, that just like chillers, they pay money every month towards Afri Forum. Hey. So Afri Forum protects Afrikaner interests. Yeah. I cannot say definitively in this country that there's an organization that fights for black African rights, where if the ANC government, if the DA is saying something, you literally send a pack and an army of lawyers to go and fight for black African issues. That's what Afri Forum does. They're like, we've got a group of people, they're minority. Afrikaans interests. These are their interests. If you infringe on their interests, we come at you. Mm. And yeah, then today, it. with the money that they've raised, because I think they make like 45 million rand a month. 
in terms of the money that they raise. 45. Yeah, they've got 300,000 members contributing about 150 rand That's on it. average each. It's even worse. We've got the power of the numbers. Yeah. Even 100 times more than yeah. them. So, so, so literally, uh, imagine Chillers, 600, 700,000 contributing 100 rand a month. I think that would be 70 million, maybe, a month. And then what they've done is because they understand with history the importance of building. Hmm. They've, create, they've set up private security in their neighborhoods. Wow. They do their own service delivery wow. in their neighborhoods, cutting grass, fixing potholes. Wow. They've built a 300 million rand skills oh. tertiary institution. So if people are going to be like, yeah, you fucking Bro. sell out. And you're, I'm like, yeah, whatever, man. I'm here to be like, if anyone's willing to listen to me, mm. I'll explain to you why we need to learn from these people so that you can be like, I've closed Barry Murray and then what because is, I'm trying to do this. I was inspired by Orania. I'll turn them up. Call it whatever what do you, you want. What do you I'm think, moving. What do you think about the DA? The Democratic Alliance. Did I answer your question? You yeah. did. Sure. Ah, fam, you did, bro. So, so I think that's very important that we, we learn from some of these things uh, very importantly. Um, I hate the political system that we have. Some of the people that I'm currently speaking to now are currently fighting all the way to the Constitutional Court to change and fix the political system we have. Uh, this representational or proportion, proportional democracy... It's bullshit. Mm. You know, we literally don't get to choose who runs the country. We don't get to choose who gets to sit in parliament. Just because you vote. And mind you, part of the bullshit with this system is I'm poor. I've got kids. My kids are hungry. I'd like to have a grant. I'd like my kids to have free schooling. I'd like to get free health care. Which party maybe promises that? The ANC. That's what I'm voting for. Mm. Then it comes with Tumbalula and it comes with what what and it comes with, but you voted ANC. But I didn't vote for that. Yeah. I voted for this. Why now do I also have to catch that kind of situation? So we need to find ways to be more direct about what we're voting for and, and what we kind of want. So I hate the political system that we have. I don't like any of the political parties because of the system that they built on, on top of. With that being said, I think the DA's wins and losses have been well documented. They seem to not be a black friendly party, mm. you know, because some of the most famous black coconuts have kind of been spat out by the by the by the party. Mm -hmm. Lindy Omazibugo, Musi Maimani, Heman Mashaba, Pumzile Fantam. And you're like, but <laughs> these were the coconuts, but the coconuts are meant to be so you're like, hey, if the co coconuts are struggling, the average black person might might struggle as well. With yeah. that being said, people that are close to the DA and some of the leaders that I've spoken to, they say that in terms of managing uh spaces, they are much better. And you see it in how they've won certain metros. Yeah. Because they, they just literally, what do you need done? They put someone who's going to try and get that done. Gates and McKenzie. Instead of saying what you want to hear, they try to do what you need to get done. Yeah. And that's where the mindset specifically of the youth is meant to be. That you open look who I'm not. Hey, I couldn't What has he done, he done so that I can follow him? Mm. If he hasn't done anything, I, he speaks well, I'll use him for motivation yeah. and what, what, but I will follow the guy who is doing. So once we get to that point, I, I think we'll win. So for me in particular, I, I wouldn't see a need to vote for the DA right now, but I do think come 2024, or rather I hope, until our political system has been changed, I hope we get a coalition government. And I urge as many young people as possible to, will that work to vote though? for that. So nothing will work because the system, like I said, for me is broken. But there's like better... There's better than coalition, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Shit. So don't you think they'd better. sabotage each other? Though? That's the thing. Um, so the one argument is sabotage. So we're working together. It's a class project, and because I know how no solos or benefits, I'm not I'm young. So I'll make sure I don't submit. So you know, it fucks everyone. Sadly, the sabotage. The other side is that people are going to be hungry for power, which is what the DA is trying to do now. Because we don't know what they'd be like if they ran the country or the EFF for that matter. You know, they might become as as complacent as the ANC. But right now, so they want to work. So in a coalition Bashella, Bashella, government, in a coalition Bashella, Bashella, government, Bashella, Bashella, Bashella. Hoping, people will say, but the portals, too, oh, yeah, that's true. as much as it was coalition, but it was us, like we ANC. Mm. No, it was EFF, because they kind of want the power. Also, they'll so. be able to disclose that. No, so they won't. The truth of the matter is they won't. My, one of the things I want to do uh, along with building a cult religion, I want to educate as many, particularly young people as possible, in the most simple way possible. Because I know Mac, you have said things like, ah, fuck politics and what, what. And I need to try and explain, because other people have tried to explain, but they suck at explaining why politics is important. Number one, just the term politics is from Greek, politica, 
And what that means is it's the affairs of the city. Mm-hmm. Polis. When you say a metropolis, yeah, the metropolis. polis is a city. So it's oh, the affairs metropolis. of a city. Oh. So when you talk about the affairs of the city, you're talking about podcast and chill. You talk about the chillers market. You talk about the fact that there's no electricity, so we couldn't fucking record. You talk about the internet. What to art? You talk about there were potholes. One of our guests was coming here, and his car, t- his car turned over. The affairs of the city, they do not need to be run by the people that are running them now. We used to, we have monarchs, for example. They can be run by kings. If you look at the Vatican City, they could be run by religious leaders. You know, they could be run by you guys. You guys, like, let's say you have a property, Orania. And you're like, no, Chillers now live on Chillers land, for example. And we make sure, like Orania, we've got endless solar. So one of the things Mac wanted me to tell you, Orania solved their load shedding problem. Um, for half of the day, they're looking to do the whole day where they completely go off grid. And they'll never have load shedding. Hmm. Because they're trying to solve the problems. Instead of complaining and whining and tweeting, fuck government. They're like, okay, this is where we're at. Let's move. Like I said at Afri Forum. No service delivery here. High grass. Bad security. We'll come and be the security. We won't ask government for help. We won't. We'll fundraise. And that's the membership And that's and literally how the podcast started. Yeah. It's like, okay, we're fired now. What do we do? Okay, let's move. Solutions. Space. Solutions. 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 And space. that's why people fucking love you guys. Because you're about solutions and you've moved beyond just... Having fat loves, you, you guys are literally, this is what I was saying about, it's nice to listen to the guys, but now I'm drinking a real gin. Yeah. Now I'm at a real market. Yeah. Where now black I've people literally are, made money from, what the fuck? Well, black so people see, are bartering. That's yeah. why we can't be like, we shouldn't shy away from these subjects of the so, real issues of so, politics. So that's bro. politics. Like politics is not political parties, but it's politics. So It's life. The, the, affa- the affairs of a city, as it is, um, is the law. It's the culture, it's the socialization, it's the whatever. Again, for me, the education of getting kids to understand why they need to understand how these things work, the history of things like money, so that when someone comes to bullshit them, you're like, nah, get the fuck out of here. Nah, that's not how it works. No, but chief, the thing is what say, I can tell you now with, with proper confidence that I probably have better political knowledge than most of the MPs. But these people are the ones that are setting your laws and the, I can give them stats that they don't know. I've, I've sat with a member of parliament who's like, you know, about 67% of fathers are absent fathers. And I'm like, no, that's because the nurses tell the mothers, don't put the father's name so it's easier to get a grant. So it's easier to get your child in school because the if the father's there, then Melek led to his ID by checking oh, his yeah, income. Oh shit, Ziggy, I'm not in the name, eh? In which name? Ziggy. Which name are you not in? Birth certificates. Birth certificates. Oh, yes. you're not. So he's fatherless. <laughs> <laughs> According to the government. Absent father. Yeah, absent father. I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. I couldn't make it when she was signing. Yeah. Sure. You you must, I'm you part must, of the stats. You must fix yeah. that. So you yeah, become part yeah, of the stats. Yeah, fuck. Pa- pa- oh. Part of that. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, right. Jeez. <laughs> 150,000 a month. <laughs> That's the grant of Ziggy there. Shit. Uh, the other thing is just as Africans, we're not there when the woman gives birth. It's inappropriate. So if they're like, but the father wasn't there when... That's but not an African not thing. There, yes, we do it then. now. I'm yeah. trying to explain the data. Yeah, yeah, yes. Trying to explain the a lot data of, of a, no, a normal, a normal African man won't be birth. holding the hand. Mm. Push, baby, push. push. Yes, mm. yes. That's for mm. us uppity blacks. Yes, mm. true. The normal gent is that's not so there. You culture I mean? says there mustn't be there. You should, And there are women that will be like, babe, I don't want you to see me in that state. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm... Because so, you won't want me sexually. Mm. Yes. You know, so you now you're telling an MP, Guti, this fucking data you're telling me is fucking bullshit. How you fix that data, for example, is then you start looking at e-wallets, you look at EFTs, you look at uh, ShopRite, money transfer. If you're saying they're absent fathers, go and find this woman's cell phone number or cell phone numbers close to her and look at how much money is being sent uh, to the cell phone number and where it's coming from. Then you'll fucking see that there are fucking men out there that are fucking sending money. Okay, I want you to answer this. Shit. Please don't wiggle your way out of this question. Meandos. Yeah. You come with meandos? You wake up, I Peña. Give you, you wake up tomorrow. <laughs> ne? Please answer this. Ne? You wake up tomorrow. You're the president of this country. You're putting me now, chief. You, now I have to answer by force. You're the president huh? of this country. What do you change? Uh, it's funny you ask because I actually wrote a piece about it this week. The first thing I'd do if I was to become president okay, overnight. Piece? I'll, I can send it to you. It's written. It's a written piece. Oh, it's not it's quite, published. It's quite long. Okay. It's quite oh, long. It's not okay. public. It's not published, that's it's, what I mean. It's not yeah. public oh, yet. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay cool. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So you're president of the country. The first thing I'd do is I'd, I'd suspend uh, democracy and the constitution for at least five to ten years. Dictator. Because anything that I would try to do would be shut down from all sides. Afriforam, 
this union, the MPs vote of confidence, I I wouldn't get fuck all done. Democracy so I'd have to way. suspend it. I'd be called a, a dictator. Paul Kagame was called a dictator at some point, but it's how you'll effect real change. Mm. You know what I mean? And yeah. then uh, I would scrap grants. The grants is the first thing I'd scrap and people would fucking lose their minds. I'd have to, de- disgruntled. I'd have to deploy the soldiers <laughs> and the water. they'd be very disgruntled. <laughs> very disgruntled messes. Um, what grants have done is they've crippled the mind of an average person. You know, in your head, the only solution is grant. The only solution is job. Yeah, so I'd kill change, that. Man. It's peanuts. And then I'd completely revolutionize our education, not just in schools, but on the internet. What that means is I'd become China. I would ban many websites in this country and force people to watch things like podcast and chill. So the Americans will come and say, oh, the, what dicta- are you the dictator panel doesn't even allow free speech. And, and I'll have um, antagonists and people... And some of them might probably have to get killed. That's kind of how it works. It's sad, <laughs> but that's, that's kind of wild. how it works. You know, that's wild. but that's it's wild. It's, it's, it's how you, it's how you build anything great. I never got to answer the ten percent question because this is this is what it's about. That if you want to build something great, it's gonna have to come at the cost of something. You know, um, and that's people. So you mean? I wanted to answer you directly now. Um, Ask so me directly so first, and then we'll go to the ten percent. We've got okay. time. It's a podcast. Okay. Yeah, we've got okay. time, bro. Please remind me. Ad- yes, yes. But but the point the point I want to touch on is there is no first world nation, country, city that exists unless there's an opposite, oppressed, explo- exploited third world space. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You look at France, you look at Congo, you could Paris. Hey, you could... It makes you say young to step. Um, so those would just be some of the things I do. But we need to empower people again. And I think that's what penalism is all about. Because this, this is my effort at leadership. I don't want to wait till I'm a politician or what, what. If I have like 12 cult members that believe. I mean, in this country, if you look at Investec, Bedvest, Discovery, um, blue label telecoms. If you look at some huge companies, they're owned by Jewish people. There are 70,000 Jewish people in this country. 48 million blacks, 48 million. 4.8 million white people. 70,000 Jews. So influential. Hmm. Sometimes you just need those 10,000 people who believe in you who are like, well, we built this, we built this. And if you benefit from uh, the Bruder Pons, Absa, or Sanlam, or Afkri, or DSTV. Yeah, those are That's the same Afrikaner, what, what? Yes, stand by all means, we don't mind. It's so, leadership is not an easy thing. And people that want to lead must know that you want to fucking catch it in the mouth. You guys have been fucking dragged many times. And it's part of the leadership journey, and you must fucking enjoy it because almost everyone who's done something great can even look now at Kanye, Elon, Jeff Bezos. All of them get dragged at some point. Just not at like. You know, Mark Zuckerberg has been in court cases. Mm. You guys must still like gear up for court cases when people sue you. Where you're gonna be like, no, no but you worship sued all the time. Oh yeah, we we'll just don't mention them. Hey. Yeah, Minis Amini sued me for two hundred k. She's still waiting for a reply. Yeah, she was two hundred k in seven days. She's still waiting for a reply. How many days? Oh, is yeah. How many days? It be? Oh, it's been months. It be like, it be like ninety days. <laughs> The whole fucking trimester. Jesus. What are to the kid being born of a smoke? So we'll call it the kid Loiso. Fuck it out. <laughs> Part of the reason chillers fuck with you guys and why you guys have built a cult following. Because like I said, Ubuntu gets attacked when you got podcast and chill in the comments on Twitter. For real. It's because people have seen you guys weather certain storms. We had an incident where JJ Tabani came and said mm, something about mm, Trevor Manuel mm, on the virtual mm, Kuku. Mm, 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 mm. And Trevor Ooh, Manuel sued that. Uh, the platform. JJ Tabani and he sued the platform, which is owned by Usbu. Yeah. And Usbu went and apologized, you know, because he's a businessman and he's got his own brand. Big he just mistake. Wanted, he wanted to distance himself. I think it was a good move nah, for, for him. Mistake. No, no. For him, you know. Um, so he did that. But apologizing. In, mm. Okay. Are you speaking to him? Yeah. He's no, he's apologizing for other, mistake. for other, for other reasons. Uh, so no, other, but I'm, I'm, I'm explaining other, why he apologized, though. Yeah, I'm oh, saying okay, that, like, if he that. really believed in that, he shouldn't have apologized. Black but it seems like he yeah, apologized so, for business reasons. Oh, sure, I it's see. his brand, and it had nothing to do with him, to mm. be honest. You know. Yeah. So I, I, if if Fusbu asked me, I was gonna say no thanks. Mm. Luckily, he didn't. Mm. If he wanted us to go and speak about it on platform, mm. I would have said, unfortunately, I'm not gonna apologize. Mm. You know what I mean? So. When Spoo released that video, 
a lot of the comments were like, oh, McG would never fucking do this. <laughs> yeah, you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. So, oh, is that they said? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's how you build like power because people can see that these are our fucking leaders. I fucking go with McG into the fucking wilderness. Yeah. Go with him to fucking Manchester with fucking slops and shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, <laughs> that's the power of leadership. Uh, in closing, man. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, president. Anyways, if I was president, yes. I'd have to be a dictator for 10 years. But I'd, I'd fix the mindsets, okay. et cetera. Penalism is meant to be my attempt at that. Yeah. Um, there can never be financial freedom unless there's financial bondage somewhere else. It's just a matter of where. So any first world nation has been built on slave labor. Whether it's Germany, like I said, with Hitler, so they had concentration camps. Russia, um, Stalin, with the USSR, they mm -hmm. had concentration camps. Um, if you look at China, luckily they uh, self-slaved. They've got enough numbers to they had enough enslave numbers to en they enslave themselves. Yes. Mao and the guys, millions of Chinese people died. Chairman when we Mao, speak, yeah, Chairman Mao. When yeah. we speak sweatshops, we speak about the Chinese yes. fucking whacking their own people. Mm. You know what I mean? Sweatshops and counterfeit goods is how China basically built itself. Mm. If you look at what the Pakistanis are doing now, they're literally enslaving themselves. Yeah. If you're going to be in a container for 16 hours a day, it's like you're in jail. Yes. Mm. That's a form of prison. And they send that money back to... Sure, but you're doing it yeah. for your self-upliftment, something that we're not willing to do. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So, mm. Mm. Um, at some point, people be like, yeah, but you look at countries like Switzerland. You look at countries like if you see a country that's doing well and there's no maybe slavery there, it means it's been outsourced elsewhere. Mm. That means there's probably a China or a Vietnam or a Pakistan or a Bangladesh doing some of the dirty work. America at some point was ex um, outsourcing the labor. Nike, there were Nike sweatshop stories. Uh, uh, Apple, I mean, just You just have to look at the France World Cup team that won the World Cup. 90% of those fuckers are African. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, the whole national team, even, look, go to Paris, you know? They, were, they weren't there because it was there. nice and now let's go on holiday. You know what I mean? So in South Africa, what's happened is because the, uh, the struggle has ended, mm -hmm. um, black people now have rights, black South Africans. Yeah. Labor laws, minimum wage. Eh. You can't build a strong South Africa with the majority that wants to get paid well. If you want us to be paid well, someone somewhere must be fucked. Must be getting robbed. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why also we have immigrants here. Yeah. Because people need that cheap labor. Yes. That's why America has Mexicans yes. that are undocumented. Yeah, that's why I've got fancy restaurants in Santon who it's 90% the waitress yeah. and waiters are from... So if South, if South Africa wants to be, be uplifted, just for people that honest, guys. want that, if you ever want South Africa to be a first world country, please know that it will come at the cost of some other nation being fucked. We might close in it. In Dubai, they, they don't work there. Right. The guys yeah. that, that that live in Dubai, they don't work. Yeah. It's just foreigners. You see, like they get paid by the government. They don't yeah. work. But even in the UK, like a lot of people who do that. <laughs> no, even in the no, I'm real. Okay. Even in the UK. Okay, bro, at the hotel we're living. Who came to clean your room? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a foreigner. Caribbean accent, weird accent. You know, I'm ready with my UK accent in it, and then a, a girl from fucking Jamaica shows up. You know what I mean to clean my room, and that's it. That's exactly what I'm trying what to say. explain that the, the the apartheid government could have never built what they were building for the majority. Mm. What was meant to happen, though, unfortunately, after that, whether it was the apartheid government or someone else, we were then meant to begin replicating the economic models. So if ESCOM, Cecil, Arms Corps, ISCO, whatever was built for 10%, mm. the, next government, the next government must come in and say, oh, since 90% wasn't serviced, we must then multiply this times nine. Mm. But why, we haven't done it. Why do you think these fuckers in government are so greedy? The short answer is because they are stupid. The longer answer is because they don't understand how things work. So all of us, all of us, I don't fucking care who you are, all of us have broken laws somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether it's bribing oh, a traffic definitely. cop, yeah, 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 fuck yeah. whether it's lying on NSFAS, <laughs> whether it's not writing the police name on a birth certificate so you can chow grants. Yeah. All of us have been corrupt in some way. All of us, bro. The yeah. problem is almost all of us don't understand the ripple effect. So when I tell you pothole, fuck. when I tell you load shedding, and you're like, yeah, but government, and I'm like, but your aunt, uprichile. But none at home and cook, hi, Pella. Uh, SAPC has now retrenched. Hey, SAPC is fucked. Did you pay your TV license? Mm -hmm. oh, There's a ripple effect. So similarly, Jeez, our politicians don't understand the ripple effect of being greedy and fucking shit up. I, use, I normally use the analogy of a cow. You milk a cow enough for the milk mm. to drink, mm. but you leave enough milk so it can feed its young, yeah. mm. so that it can have the next generation. Oh. 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 Thank you. And this 
Everything is a milky yeah, Because all governments, all governments are corrupt. Everything. All governments are corrupt. In yes. the world, everybody's eating. In our families Obama was eating. And in our yes, families, that... church is corrupt. But some churches thrive for the people yes. more than others. Even well, though I'm always saying is don't milk everything. Take not oh. everything. Leave take, enough for the bro, carbs. Take. Leave if, enough if for the carbs. If you get two hundred million rand. A, a, a tender, take 20, 10 million, 20, 20 million, million and then do the work. We're good. And then you're going to have 120s in two years as opposed to 320s in two years because the economy is that bad. It's a simple concept, bro. It's a very simple concept. So, so, so it's literally just that you, you mold the cow until it bleeds, gets infected, it can't feed its young, it's dead. Tomorrow we've got no cow, we've got no meat, we've got no... Nothing. And then you're like, oh, but what happened? The next guy, the next country, they made sure they were feeding calves. You're like, but look, they've, they've got a thousand cattle. Milk there is now free, like you said with Dubai. Mm. No tax. People get a, so much money for just to be a citizen mm. because they understand the value of that thing. So the short answer is because they're stupid. The longer answer is because they don't understand the ripple effect. Why do you hate black people? How? Hi, Mechi. Hi. Hi, Mechi. Why do you hate black people? Uh, do I hate black people? Okay, let's let's start here because I I a lot of people have misquoted me as saying black people are stupid, black people have a problem, etc. So let me start off by quantifying and saying the majority of black people frustrate me um, because of their mindset and because they refuse to take accountability. First and foremost, we live in a country that was colonized. That's why we're speaking English now and why we dress like this. We need to be honest. We were colonized, we were beaten. Yeah, that's superior weapons, it doesn't fucking matter. I'm a bigger guy, I lift heavier weights, so I, when I punch you, you fuck out. We were beaten, accept it. Now that we were beaten, how do we move forward? How do we solve it? Do we assimilate, because that's the world, and let's all learn English, and let's master money, and let's be rich, and let's do well, and let's work with the rest of the country and make sure that we uplift ourselves? Or do we want to go back to African systems and live in the villages and use traditional medicine, whatever? Let's be honest about the way forward. With black people, unfortunately, the majority, so I need to quantify and add a disclaimer because this is how people get in trouble when they just say blacks. The majority uh, of black people refuse to take accountability and they refuse to solve problems and they refuse to move towards the people that want to solve the problems. For example, we want a black bank. We want a black... The old mutuals, the APSAs, the discoveries, all of these have been built off black money. The premiums, the, the deposits, that's all black money. Someone is organized and is able to collect black money. It's just not a black person. So when will you solve that? And if you can't, because sometimes you actually have limitations. If you can't, how do you become part of the solution? Okay, Adrian Ko, Jewish guy, built Discovery. Let me actually go and put my hand up and go work there. Let me come up with ideas. Let me go into the township and set up a discovery model. Let me go to discovery and say, but you know, there's people of Emadate in Newcastle that pay, pay you guys, but you never give back to them. Can we host a, a race there? Can we host a party? Can we partner with the podcast and chill? Because a lot of our people watch podcast and chill and discoveries never put money there. You know what I mean? So how do we get involved in, in solving some of these things? And Abantaba Nyama, they are emotional. When you present them with solutions, with what, what, they, they refuse, they, they kick and fight and scream and every black person that has tried, sadly, to offer solutions somehow gets swallowed. And then black people turn a blind eye, just like we lost Obigo, Osobuwe, Okrisan, they've never been avenged by the same black people they were fighting for. No one has ever in their honor gone to find out how their kids are doing. What, 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 by the way, shout out to Ukuku Zuma because I think she works with one of Chris Hani's daughters or granddaughters in one of the shows. So it's, it's nice seeing legacy kids putting each other on. But no one has avenged their debts and no one is trying to solve problems. So you almost feel like you'll always be slashed. And I work with DJ Spoo, who I see doing so much, puts niggas on, wears local brands, does charity work with this left, Imofa is like, he's, he's trying. He's not a politician. No one is funding him somewhere to go and and then he still gets dragged by the same people. So no, at some point you have to say, no, nah, nah. fuck. <laughs> this week now they say he looks homeless. He looks unkept. So at some point you're like, you know what, actually fuck it. And I think going back to yeah, leadership, bro. I know you guys live for the chillers. Just be careful because I hate democracy. Be careful of letting chillers dictate the vision. 
And one of the cool things, one of the leaders of AfriForum was saying this, saying unlike other organizations where the people tell us what to do, we've told them what we do. And then they come and they say, we want to work with you. So if you guys have a vision, make sure, look, you can consult with the chillers. Can take some of the ideas, be like, oh, fuck, that's a killer idea. We'll try that out. But don't let them dictate because you're asking people that have failed to solve their own problems, to give you solutions. Mm. Jeez. Come I on. I say they failed, but... How <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 for the record, 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 for the record. But I get your point. For the record, I, I absolutely love black people. I love Africans. I think we're the world's best kept secret. I think some nations know that. Um, A lot of nations know that, bro. And... Um, one of, the, one of my new mentors said something very interesting. He said, during the slave trade, during apartheid, or not, not apartheid, during colonization, early colonization, and other atrocities to the Africans peop African people, yeah. there were many Africans that prayed into the universe, asking questions like, God, what's happening? Please help us. Speaking to Amadlos, Bepal, you know. And according to him, this is not my belief, this is his belief. According to him, the universe always responds. But unfortunately, it doesn't work in the same time that we work in, you know, that you eat and you overeat because your stomach doesn't function with your mouth. So you'll only realize later, hey, I overate. Now my stomach is sore. So the universe has heard the prayers. They came late and the universe is now responding. Now, this time that we're in is the most fertile time for African people to do the most amazing things. Wow. The, ti the time the is now. Yeah. Africa, the time wow. is now. Wow. Africa, Look at the bunch. Africa, the Look time is now. Yeah. Everybody, Afro Beats. Better boy, better no, boy. No, Afro Beats, Black Piano. Coffee, Piano. Elon Musk, Amazon is run by a guy from South Africa. Baby. The back end of it, you know what I mean? A lot of things. Africa, the time is fucking now. Look at us, the fucking podcast. Sadu. Are you ready? How does that song go? Shadu. Shadu. Everybody go eat breakfast. Shadu. Hey. Fuck, who do you fuck with music-wise, bro? Yeah, man. Uh, lots of stuff. Uh, I don't think there's lots of stuff in my life. But anyways... Uh, you are like a lot of stuff in your life. Oh, shit. <laughs> thank, Yellow you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, <laughs> I'm the light in my life. Um, I come from... I don't want to call it old-school hip-hop, because to young kids now... Young kids call Drake an OG. Fuck. <laughs> that's um, weird. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's weird. Up. I'm as old as Drake. Nah, he's in his 30s. 80, 1986 was the year of champions, by the way. Ah, 87. Yeah, it's 30. Uh, 87. We're 87. No, 87. 87, 87, 87, 87 nigga. Proven. We got Messi. We got Messi. We got Sokolua. So. We got Matt G. We got we Ghost, got the Ghost Lady. Lady. Fuck. Can we shoot go on? Rafael uh, Nadal. Usain uh, Bolt. Uh, uh, people like Lady Gaga. Uh, Na 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 1986 was a special year. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just letting you know. Nah, so, uh, Drake, like I said. Um, so I, I grew up on hip hop quite a lot. Mm. Um, I initially fell in love with Buster. Then I went a bit underground at the time. Talib, Most Def. Mm. Uh, when I got, when I got to varsity, drunk. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't drink. drink. I don't he drink. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Like, how do you feel? Like one of my my, my homies went to varsity with you. Jeez, Rhodes. Yeah, Rhodes. Rhodes is like the uh, drinking capital of the fucking continent. And yes, and you are one of the few guys who didn't drink. Let me get to the conversation. And he was like, you. Like, girls were gushing over you. They wanted you, oh, right? Uh, like, girls, because you're a pretty boy. So, yeah. So, it's like, so many of my peers and people that I know are doing things right now. Okay, whatever. Dude didn't drink. That's you. Boom. Every girl was crazy about him. Boom. Don't know how many girls I tried, but they wanted him instead. <laughs> pretty boy. We made fun of him because his brother's name is Penson. Uh, I think, uh, uh, and, 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 and and your Penwell, so Penson and Penwell. By the way, yeah, I'm watching the episode. My but sister's like, Penrose. Since I'm on the platform, let me just oh, give a wait, shout out to my. So your brother is right. Penson. Your yeah. Penwell. Your my sister's, sister's Penrose. Penrose. Yeah. Wow. My mom thought she was a poet. Yeah. The next one was, would have been penicillin. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Penis. Your parents are still alive, no? Penicillin. Uh, my father passed away 2020. The coach. So my father has been Satan in my life. And I appreciate him so much for that. And this is a conversation for men. Jordan Peterson talks about it a lot. Let's that um, men, good men, need to learn how to be dangerous. 
The reason yeah. why we get dominated and bullied out there in the world is because good men have become absolutely pathetic. Oh, you know what I mean? Bro, so, bro, bro, bro. bro. You saw his violence, man. Yeah. Yeah. No. Why you no. Good, no. Good, good men need to learn to be dicks. Good men need to learn to be dicks. Good men need to learn to be dicks. So stupid niggas are dicks. <laughs> yeah. Stupid, no talent niggas are just yeah. dicks. Yeah. So the way Jordan Peterson puts it is that uh, a harmless man is not a good man. A good man, uh, a good man is a dangerous man, but who knows how to use it when the time is right and keeps it at bay. You know what I mean? So we saw it with the riots. People we didn't expect, Indians, were armed. We weren't surprised when the white Afrikaners were armed, but you look at us, outside of the taxi industry, how many good black people have weapons, hmm. can fight? So when you're in yes. shit, when you're with your woman, both of you are fucking in the corner, call the cops, babe. I don't know what to do. We need to learn oh, to have that fucking age oh. because that's what it takes. And my father, I'm so blessed. And I realized this when I got older. And this is why kids must spend time with their dads, even if their fathers are a piece of shit, because that child has got that man's genes in him. And that child needs to understand what those genes mean. So my father, I'm not going to speak much about him, but I'll say this. I was fucking scared of him. He was a great leader, extremely charismatic, very smart, very dangerous. Loved guns. He loved dogs. Um, he used to make boys in the street punch each other. Like a lot of guys literally grew their balls because of my dad, you know. And um, yeah, nigga. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. So anyways, my, so <laughs> what a dad. Yeah. So 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 I I I never thought my father was gonna die because I've heard bad people never die. Oh yeah you know yeah yeah, I mean? yeah yeah villains generally villains bad, never yes. fucking die. So the heroes. When he to our when, when he died, I fucking drove down with my mom because I wanted to see his dead body. I was like, what the fuck? He's really dead. And I looked at him and I was fascinated. And part of the fascination was in the last He's five years him. before he passed, I built a very great relationship with him. Mm. I learned to understand him so I could explain him to my mom. Mm. My mom understands my dad because of me. Mm. You know what I mean? So Shit, bro. Um, so anyways, my dad passed away in Feb. 2020 and then in March we had a hard lockdown that's how I know that motherfucker was that powerful he was like fuck you niggas I'm not just gonna fucking die and keep quiet I'm gonna fucking lock you motherfuckers down hey Melligan can you guys punch each other yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah Melligan I uh, uh, it's only Neo and Tibla Neo would win hands down let's be honest we need Nash here we need a strong African brother a brother in here Nice African nigga. You yeah. know you. I got distracted, <laughs> sorry. Jay-Z, because I was at Rhodes, uh, yeah. a lot of Zimbabweans at Rhodes, people don't know. Uppity Zimbabweans oh, that's the, money. And, and that's uh, the irony, right? Because We think uh, Zimbabweans are poor, and then you no. go to Rhodes, and you're like, ah! Zimbabweans in Rhodes are the Nigerians. That's oh, weird. Basically. And that's Can the irony, because of uh, Cecil John Rhodes. Cecil John Rhodes. Rhodes, Zimbabwe. People that don't know Rhodesia. Fuck. Zimbabwe was mm. Rhodesia. Rhodesia was called Rhodesia because Zambia Rhodes. was Cecil John Rhodes. Cecil was just like, yeah, this is all going to be mine, this one. Mm. And then Zimbabwe niggas at Rhodes, they follow Rhodes there. Yeah. So it's because Zimbabweans love Cecil John Rhodes. Jeez. Ghost Lady, you got a <laughs> last question. I didn't finish on music. So Jay Z, because of Rhodes, um, my favorite rapper, people hate it, but Rick Ross, I love Tupac. I love pop music, of course. I love Afro Beats. I love Jesus. I, I love good music. Kanye West is the greatest musician of all time. Mm -hmm. I used to want to be Michael Jackson growing up, and I thought he was the greatest musician of all time, but I've spent time studying Kanye because I grew up with classical music. I was a choir boy. Kanye West is the greatest musician of all time to date. Which part in the choir? Like the soloist. Which fuck, flows? look at me. <laughs> the fuck do you mean? <laughs> oh damn, you're the soloist. <laughs> hey, now hit us with something. Quiet. You got a question? <laughs> you sound like an Umzulili kind of guy. Yeah, Umzulili. I think it's a few call the koala. You know, like Nanga go Umzulili. No, he wasn't. Hey, no. What's your take on um? GBV, you know, and how uh, the, the, the interaction between uh, the male and female, you know, and just the issues, as you see, that are just so... Before you answer that, mm -hmm. to add on to that, I want yeah. to ask you the rape culture in South yes. Africa. So take that as a as yes, one because that's I want you to, to GBV and the rape culture the rape of culture. our country, because there is a rape culture, bro. There are a lot of conversations we need to have. I know, I know. Sometimes too, we talk too much and we do little, but I, I think we need to talk more because I realize we might start doing on the wrong premise. <laughs> so we need to talk until we have the right premise. 
I hate the term gender-based violence. Um, I hate the term xenophobia, for example. Those are Sorry, bullshit. Sorry, I'm laughing at so He's trying to put his leg like mine, but... Nah, it's flames. <laughs> No, I'm being comfortable. Yeah. No, no, no. Now I'm being very comfortable. You yeah. see, struggling. <laughs> I didn't even struggle. You know. When I said I was a beefy, you know, but beefy oaks. You're very beefy. You know. So you want to, you know, but confidence, confidence paramount. GDP and rape it. culture and SA, man. <laughs> Come, hey guys. This is shaming this. Yeah. Shaming. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry for laughing. Yeah. Hey, this is what, this is what's I'm wrong with this country. I'm sorry for laughing, so sorry. Right? What are you shaming? Exactly. Yeah. No, on a serious note, yeah, as you were. Sure. So there are conversations we need to have. I, I don't like the term gender based violence. Um, <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I'm so, so what's happening? What's going on? I... <laughs> I'm comfortable. Oh, so you. I think this chair so is you broken. Are, you guys are uncomfortable. <laughs> you are. You have discomfort in my comfort. Is that what it is? You have discomfort in my comfort. We're uncomfortable in my comfort. comfort. <laughs> is that what it is? In it. Is that what it is? In it. You have discomfort in my comfort. So a black guy can't. <laughs> Your haters will always be here about it. Haters will always be here. So I'm a this nigga's gonna end up with a cramp. Jeez. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, Jeez. Uh, gender gender based violence. So I hate the term gender based violence because I understand the psychology of the world and propaganda. And I understand what happens when these terms get thrown out there. They're actually meant to ignite something. And part of that ignition is getting, in particular, black men and black women to hate each other. Mm. When you look at the data in this country, it almost feels like bad men almost think twice before beating or killing a woman. Because the data almost says something like four times the number of men are killed in this country than women. But you'll never see that because no one cares about that. It doesn't sell. If you look at the data, four times, women four times more than men kill children. But no one will talk about that. No one is paying money to say women are child killers. Let's keep the children away from the are women. For real, they, bro? These are facts. For real? These are stats. Mm. By far, women kill children more than men. Jeez. By far, men kill other men than women. So if, for example, in a year you had 20,000 deaths, you might find that there were like 4,000 women killed and 16,000 men. Sure. You know, for me, the focus is meant to be bad people and good people. Ooh. Because if you're good and I'm good, regardless if you have a vagina and I have a penis, mm. let's come together and solve the problem. And fight mm. her penis. But now as soon as you say gender... Uh, eh? Happiness. <laughs> <laughs> And that's my happiness. This is, this is why you get dragged. Yes. No <laughs> fucking drag me all up. I'm yeah, so fucking dragged, man. I hear you. I double fucking dead. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've yeah, never seen let's, pain let's shut, let's, shut, let's shut down. And then, and then on Monday, right, shut down no, tomorrow, on. tomorrow morning, when I hear Monkaya and the traffic is. <laughs> I fucking say prefix, yes. yeah. Head boy, <laughs> fucking prefix. Hey, we head boy, yo. That you head boy then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, best behavior, best behavior. Switch off this mic. <laughs> yeah, this but it's it's, it's 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 more about good people and bad people yeah. uh, versus the sex. Versus the sex, because in particular, black people, it's almost like whenever black people are making some type of progress. They are given some new thing to hate each other. Yeah. Gender, yeah. Yeah. xenophobia, tavern yeah. killings. Mm -hmm. Tavern killings. Tavern killings. Now it's politics. Mm -hmm. Are you what? Always, when I look at just in this country, if you look at the Muslims, for example, yeah. the way the genders they work, completely different. And it's almost like they switch off. We're in the exact same country, watching the exact same news, Yo. listening to the exact propaganda. But the Muslim woman is not saying, Yo, babe, you know, so they fucking killed. And you know, you men, you must, you must call out your friends. She's not thinking that. She's like, I've got a good husband. He works for the family. I work for the family and we move. And Damn. our friends have a good unit and we move. Mm -hmm. That's why this whole thing of blacks, but the things you're black, you use Zulus. I hate that fucking monolithic. Let me all be bunched up. You know, black people are poor. I'm not poor. Mm -mm. I'm richer than most white people. I've traveled around the world more than the average white person. 
So when a white person comes to me, you know, you play, I'm like, hey, don't speak to me about things you don't know. I'll buy your whole fucking family. Mm. You know what I mean? So I try to isolate from that type of shit. And I think we have a problem of lack of critical thinking. And because of these propaganda arguments out there, we end up missing the whole thing. Mm. They are yeah. bad people. They are bad people. They True. exist. It's a yeah. fact. Yeah. We need the good people, it's men the and women, of time. to learn how to fight, to get guns and learn how to use guns and to protect themselves. Yeah. We need more men to be present with their kids. Yes. We need more women to be present with their men. You are happy to go and serve because you're a feminist. Right? You're empowered. Wow, no man will tell me I'm not going to. You're begging men for jobs. You wake up every day to go and work for men you don't know. They're mm. probably white men at that big white company you work for. Yeah. But when your husband is, is your, he's your thing. Yeah. You guys are meant to be building. You're like, oh, I'm not going to be oppressed by you. But you wake up on a Saturday morning, Sunday evening, you're fucking working for another man. White man. That's why you get women, Muslim women are told, yeah, you guys are oppressed. I'm oppressed because I work for my family and my man. Liberation means I must go work for another man I don't know Ooh. to enrich him. Yes. Now, nah, fuck that. So I, I really think we need to just fix the mindset around Our some pen. of these things. In, ter in terms of rape culture, <laughs> you, I'm getting, I'm getting many converts. You, you gonna be, you gonna the be the church of penalism. Gonna get a standing yeah, ovation. Yeah. The church of penalism nah, is growing. Nah. I think everybody's gonna nah, give nah, a standing yeah, ovation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the church of penalism is growing. Oh, oh shit, yeah. All oh, three of us. This lad is like three of us here. Yeah. Those are five. Um, part of the conversations we need to have is certain behaviors and tendencies that we've inherited from the past, which no longer apply. Yeah. We need to have those conversations because we don't, if we don't have them, we end up with rape culture. Because rape culture is real and it's, it's stupid because we don't notice it. It's the same way there's female privilege. That's why there's more women at daycares, at nursery schools. That's why niggas get laughed at if it's just like, no, dog, I'm a nurse. Yeah, ask yourself, have you ever what seen... What do you mean you're a nurse? No, but you know ask I mean? yourself, have you ever seen a female hobo? Yeah, yeah. that's a form of privilege. Yeah. Because have you ever seen a female women. hobo? My nigga. <laughs> my, my nigga. Ask yourself, so, no, black no. child. <laughs> have you ever seen a female? No, no, like, listen, no, no, like, listen. That's what female I, privilege. Like when I say, it when is, I is, say, when I say, so I was walking in Joseph, I'm going to do this hobo. <laughs> Everyone is thinking of a man. Yes. As a hobo. No yeah. one is thinking it's a female. Of course. Because right? of the last line of defense. Exactly. Yeah. So, so we, we need to have these conversations because women have changed. Yeah. Part of the problem we have is that women empowerment was given to black women without workshopping and explanations. And you guys were made strong and there was no conversation with your men. There was no conversation with your sons and your daughters. And but then all was, of a sudden was, there were fights. Yeah, I guess that was also a male problem. It was, that was because of the lack of men being there, you know, obviously having a lot of absent fathers. It was Who a gave you women empowerment? Were you given by black African men? Did black African men say we want to empower women? It was Beyonce, all the single ladies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shit went sour after that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 wow. My, my point is the people that bring some of these things is not us. Who it's other it? people. And when you look at how they live, they don't live the way that they're telling you to live. Mm. When you look at, yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah, let's call true. them the West. That's true. It's when like, you look, it's when like you look Zuckerberg, at the West, Zuckerberg owns Facebook, but he doesn't allow his kids to be on social media. Bill Gates, the same. Yeah. A lot of the execs of social media, they don't allow their kids to be on social media. They understand why. You allow Ziggy to watch his podcast. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I, I just implore that we think about it. And yeah. I think for- I asked him the other day, I'm like, what, do, what does dad do? Oh, you sit with your friends and you talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. That's that's great. great. <laughs> that was just essentially what we do. Yeah. <laughs> that's all you do. We don't cheese. So I'm like, you do. I'm like, like pretend and you talk. Pretend you're there stuff. and you're at work. It's like, how do I <laughs> Sorry, man. Yeah. Jeez, you got, by the way, you guys are blessed to have this platform, and I just want to say thank you very much for the platform yeah. and being able to make money. We see this in America, man. Being able to make money and make a difference, doing what you fucking love yeah. and inspiring other people. Yeah. Is a, is the fact that you, the fact channel. that your kids can say, "What does your dad do?" Ah, he just listens to the friends and he laughs. And, <laughs> yeah, right. and he's got money. Why is he driving that? Yeah. I don't know, man. But I guess people like listening to these friends. <laughs> I think that's fucking cool. Yeah. So I just, we, we need to reclaim 
uh, ourselves. We need to have these conversations. We need to sit with our sisters, with our fathers, with our, and be like, how can we change things? And then we need to protect each other. So my son, I've got a son and a daughter in China, for the son and a daughter in Durban, for the son in Newcastle, and then my last born son is in Joburg. But the two kids in China in particular lived with me for eight years before their mom took them for three years. They're coming back next year. But I used to tell them, you have to look out for each other. Mm. I tell the girl, look out for your brother, look out for your sister, learn how to fight. And I encourage, learn how to fight each other. And I tell the little girl, the reason your brother must teach you how to fight uh, and he fight with you so that when boys try try you out in the streets, you'll be like, my brother toughened me up, so I'm good. You made my dad, each other? My dad, yes, yes, <laughs> like yes. Dad. Like my dad. This is why I love my dad, because my dad created Fight Club. You know what I mean? So he fucking helped us to grow balls, which is something... Yo, my brother's like a fucking alpha what what. Bro, what do you think of weights and shoots guns? We are the guys and we are trying to be the guys that in times of terror, despair, when you're like, we're fucked. They they are they are insurgents, they are bombers, they are who do you call? Let me call Penn. Because Penn is actually not scared to kill these guys. There's a documentary I watched, I forgot what it is. Did you know that Black Coffee's brother is in the British Army? That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Those are those are amazing stories we need to tell. Oh, yeah. Amazing stories. There's a documentary that I watched. So what Afrikaans people are doing in the country, they send their kids to this camp. Yeah. And the boy child, and they learn it's like fighting it's military, military training. I forgot the, the, they send the kids to military training. Your neighbor in Centurion. Mm. Yeah, they literally send the kids to some military ending where the guys were some water, mm. uh, a sergeant in apartheid. Yeah, ex-military and guys. Ex-military training. guys like training. the Africa initiation. Boys. Yeah, it's yeah. Like them going to the mountains. Sending to get fucking circumcised, mm. yes. they're sending them to a camp, military yeah. camp, mm. in case one day shit happens. Yeah. And the Afrikaans are prepared. If anything one day shit happens in this country, they prepared. the Afrikaans people are prepared. Yeah. There's a place they will go to and they will border and demarcate it for themselves and they're prepared. You might what do you greet think them and say hi, John, at the gym, but they're prepared. Go on. <laughs> How do you think, what do you think of the Mbogotos? They're prepared. What Mbogotos? Your feminism amongst feminism, black feminism, women. Yes. Feminism amongst black women. That's Let's just cut this which changed Yeah, Tsikki Mazwai, yeah. Uh, I wanted to touch on this. I, I discussed this one with one mentor of mine. What's pretty cool, and I hope black people in particular will follow on on this, outside of that military training in the bush of and whatever, the Buras, yeah, the Bura boys. white Afrikaans people have built uh, lifestyles where you get training without realizing it. So rugby as a sport allows you to get physical conditioning and learn how to have physical altercations with guys in a contained environment. We tackle the fuck out of each other, what, what? Black boys don't really have spaces like that. Mm. Number two, they go hunting and fishing regularly. Mm. So they know how to feed themselves without even realizing Ooh. I can hunt, I can fish. I live off they, the minimum. They, they go farming, they go camping. Imagine going to sleep in the stars, you're like, for what, dog? It's because they're learning how to live in the elements in case shit oh, ever goes down. Oh my God. Yeah, you know and shit I mean? will go down one day. So Be I, ready, we, more than we, us. We need to get in touch with nature, hike, camp, go to fishing. Feet. It does a, a fuckload for I'm you. I'm The Mbogotos. They have a place to, to, to play. They have a pot to play. I, I, I believe the world is very dynamic and almost... <laughs> Jeez, no. That was Saul, not me. Pot to play. Hey, you said a pot. You know, I heard pots. So, huh? the world is very dynamic. <laughs> They're coming for me, right? Oh, they're getting it now, right? They're getting it now, yeah. I'm not going to get into that. No, you said a pot. They want a pot. You said the black woman have a pot to play. Who's your head? I'm not going to get Hey, I'm the pan in this. In this oh, yeah. Yeah. He's the pot. I'm the pan. Come in and see me. I'm the pan. He's the pot. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a pot to play. That woman never pot to play. What the fuck? I'm like, what the fuck? I thought you were being progressive. What the fuck are you saying now? A pot to play. <laughs> I'm man. Uh, say that again. I'm sure. I, I'm sure. I didn't hear you say a pot. I'm glad you. I'm glad your fucking Balfour collapsed here. You are gonna have pins and needles and a cramp. That's what made this busy ambulance. Ah, collab. I'm healthy, dog. The whole shit. Oh, you sum carb. I know you love. I'm very healthy. It's solid. I cheer my eat my spinach. <laughs> I drink my water. I'm good. What did you eat this morning, so? I could have made kids like him, you know. Mm. What did I eat? I had, I, I had oats. Went to gym. Came back. I had uh, plain yogurt and muesli. Oh. Hey. Are you not I, fucking I, I, entertained? I yeah, yeah. Jeez. 
exactly. um, I think the world is dynamic and different people are going to lead. I think this is another point maybe I have to make quickly. The world is run on world views. That means someone gets to dictate what they think is the right way to do things. Ooh. If your dad is the most powerful or richest guy in the family, you guys will slaughter goats yeah. or cows. You guys will say, no, but in this family, this is how we do it. Because he's the guy that sets the view for the family. It happens obviously on a tribal level, Zulus. It happens on a national level like what we have now. There's a few people that run the world. People believe Bill Gates is arguably one of them that determine in what direction the world is moving in. So in that, there's constantly a battle for worldviews. What is right and what's wrong? Should we be allowed to swear? Should we do whatever we want? Should women be in the kitchen handling the pots? You know, should men, whatever the case may be. So I think some of these female leaders have a specific view of how they think the world should be and we should allow them that voice. With that being said, you need to understand and women in particular need to understand that men are wild animals. You know, we speak about Afrikaans people now and being in the wild and what, what. Men are Men are wild animals. The women that want to take on men must be willing to, and this is going to come out very wrong, but this is what it is. If women ever want to be respected at the same level as men, they must rape men, kill men, oppress and ex exploit men Jesus. because men are doing that not that they will do that they do that every day and that's why we have male privilege that's why i can walk at night because other men do dark shit so these women if they want their world views they can go the violent route and go killing men if you have a penis you're gonna get a lower job or whatever or they can try and do it intelligently but they must just be careful i'm glad you used Nunsi as an example because she gets a lot of heat and i'm just saying they need to be careful but they, have, they are very necessary. I, I love them very much. My mom was very strong. And part of the reason I'm a non-sexist, as penalism is non-sexism, is particularly because there are so many strong, Good. even physically. Mm. I know women that could, I, I don't know you, but from a physical women perspective, strong, yeah. they'll women fuck you up. Strong, mm. And you must understand, women are strong, bro. They are women are women are carrying babies and mm. Babambi. Women that's gymming every day. You're not women doing are strong, it. Fam. So when you try to hit women it, she's like, I want Babambi, so you're like, hey, what's what holding me? Uh, women are strong, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what, <laughs> no, what you just said made <laughs> me realize <laughs> I've never <laughs> come <laughs> across <laughs> and they're around the country. African are feminists. Women, African are feminists. They don't have so time you, for that Are nonsense. you saying it, they thrive so much, you know, because yeah. Afrikaner men, really, let's be honest, are the sure. most powerful people in the country. Sure. Above the president, even. Sure. You're right. And the, the, their women haven't tried to tame the Afrikaans men. Sure. As feminists. Sure. Well, part of the problem is the fact, not part of the problem, part of the issue is the fact that they're winning. When you're winning, no one cares. Yeah. Oh, if, oh yeah, it's easy black for, yes. Our, our, losing, right? our, our black oh, South African sisters yeah. love West African men. Yes. Because they have money. Why are you putting it? Hey, hey, hey. No, oh, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know what? Black pen, black pen. You're from Congo. Black pen. <laughs> no, black pen. Oh, no, no, that's, that's Central Africa. So that's the West. That's Central Africa. But you're right, dog. And, and the thing is, our women are exposed to the West African niggas who are winning. Who are winning. There's a lot of them losing. Oh, and they submit. In Hillbro, there's a lot of them losing. I've got there's a lot of losing yeah, Nigerians, yeah. dog. Like, pathetic ones. You Never. know what I'm like? What the fuck? You're Nigerian, nigga? I've, you know I've what got, I mean? uh, I've got They're friends. They're only the ones in Santon. Those are the winning ones. Yeah, I've got, I've got friends, female friends, black South African girls who are married to Nigerian men, and they submit. Fucked up. And the reason they submit is because the men are winning. So, obviously, part of the, pro the project was to get the men out of the house so that the woman is left vulnerable and then it's like ooh your man abandoned you Ish. so that they can take you out of the house and say where are you going to get money come be a girl come be a domestic worker here mm. and then they took your kids and they manufactured them in school to Learn I, I need a job mm. I need a job wow, we have unemployment we un unemployment I need a job you know what I mean so they split us and now, and now today those same people that's what I'm saying did black African men empower you or did it come from somewhere else those same people are like but why are these men, look at men. You know when they talk about black women in corporate and what what, it's white men that dominate corporate. But you'd swear that the black women are fighting black men in corporate. Mm. Just one of the um, stats that came out, black women in corporate earn marginally higher than black men. Huh. That's a fact. You know what I mean? But we don't know these things because the agendas are telling us, aye, the problem is whatever. So 
I appreciate the Mbogodos, they have a part to play. There's a lot of strong women, there's a lot of intelligent women that have to lead. There are too many, too many, and this is how black people lost the country. There are too many weak black men out there. Oh. And just because you have a penis doesn't mean you're a good leader. Mm. Doesn't mean you're strong. Ish. It doesn't mean you're so... You know, those are the conversations we need to have because... As Tibla walks you know, out, I guess he's a weak man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tibla walked out. <laughs> 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 now, I'm we you love you, Tibla. I love you, my nigga. The day he's sitting, he didn't walk out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's there. So, th that's the reason we need to have the conversations. Do we actually want feminism? Do we want women empowerment? If yes, can we agree on, on and how it must be structured so that it works for us? Because we do want women to lead. Yeah. And not just say, but women used to lead in Africa. And that's uh, just a story. Yeah. Let women lead for real. for real. And let's move to something called meritocracy, which is what we need in this country. Singapore has it. I think the Chinese government has it. The most capable, most competent, most qualified person must do the thing. Yes. If my female cousin is the richest, she's a CEO of what what, she has a great mind, she's got a vision for the family. We need to follow her leadership. It can't be This is why this family's going nowhere. Yeah. So if we're not gonna to be talkers, willing and to that goes to, to government women, as well. Definitely yeah, the one who's, who's, got, who's qualified on merit. Yes, hence on merit. Meritocracy. Irrespective of hence meritocracy. sex, sex race, race, gender, race. The one you can do the best job. Akira Mandela said, if the, the cat can catch the mice, it doesn't matter the color. So you love you that one. That. <laughs> no, he loves that. that's meritocracy. Yeah, we, do you hey, agree man, with that quote? We, and what are your opinions on Mandela? Wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's, put a, let's put a stop on that. Okay. We, we had a tape, so we got to redo this. Some other time, man. Because nah, no we stress. need like five hours of pain. Yeah, bro. bro yeah. Didn't you guys invite me here for like 15 minutes? Hey? I thought I was here for like 15 minutes. Never. You know and you, you were nervous. You, you know you love the sound of your own voice, dog. What are you I talking about? When, when we said we want to give him an hour, he was nervous. I was like, dude, have you heard yourself? Yeah. And I I'm was a fucking long God. Long I said, have I, I heard myself? I'm a fucking God. I'm a God. <laughs> Why are you doubting yourself? Daniel, no, thank no, you so fuck. much for coming through, man. MacGyver. Really appreciate it, man. MacGyver. We're going to be definitely having more of these because I know the chillers are going to love you because this is the shit we love, man. Yeah, we the love chillers love this people shit, dog. coming and talking yes. their truth. Pen, the God pen. Guys, I love you very much. The chillers love you very much. I'm a chiller myself. Thank you for the work you're doing for South Africa. It's going to get tough as you get bigger. There's going to be a lot of influence. A lot of influence from the chillers, from money, from powerful people, not just here, but around the world. As far as possible, please try and protect your own brains, your own lives. Try and protect your vision for what you're trying to build here. That's why I'm off social yeah, media yeah, for that so very well. same reason. But we well, love we love you guys very much, man. And please keep at it. And just on behalf of Usbu as well, because he fucking fucks with you guys. We just want to thank you for the support for Ivi Chalm Kuku. And all the other shit that we're trying to do as well. We want to live in like an amazing country. And if we can do something towards it, by That's all it, means. Bro. Have you ever trended? You know we'll you're going to trend after this, right? Have you ever trained? Yeah. Why don't you guys are like... Penwell. Trend makers. Pen. Trend makers. No, no, no Penwell, the God Pen. No, I'm from the Wundlabe podcast. So, hey, who's this guy? <laughs> hey, but, we out here, man. Podcast and chill. Boom. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to Black Excellence. Do not fear, for if you do, just sip on some grandeur. And if you still do, ask ourselves, what would Mapapunzi do? Parama chilla, itlesha lefiki. Bungo yig, even when they ask you, how sabi in, do not fear. For if you do, just say, Anistiri. This is the medicine of censorship. This is the pill. Which one is that one? Podcast and chill.